The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another episode of the Horrible Gamers podcast, episode number 387, recorded on March 7th, 2022. Today I am your host, Steve Boyer, yes, the Mayo. You got me today. Gunny, we got, we got you over here, riding over in the West Coast, the best coast. Gunny G in the Merrill. I'm here, guys. I showed up. No, no Jesus tonight. What, what what happened over here? Where is he? What happened? Uh, Where'd he go? I don't know. You it's know. got a spring over here, man. It's like, it's like, you know, the sun is shining. It might be rainy up there a little bit, but he might be having a picnic at the park. Probably. You know what we did? So, so since we couldn't get Jesus, we went ahead and did the next best thing, right? We went out and got Mr. Canada, that guy from the great up north up there, Ryan Gibson, give eight seven 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 seven. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome. Going on, everybody. Another episode of Horrible Gamers. Let's do this. Yeah, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you back. You're you're always fun having you on. Even, even though Jesus says you argue with him all the time, and he, I do though. He has to let he you argues win. With he me says. Too. He argues with me too. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he's like that Ryan guy. I'm glad he's not on the show tonight because we're just. We're just like, we're them. very, we're very opposing a, a lot of the time, me and Jesus. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't see eye to eye sometimes. That's what makes this show so good. Yeah. You know Part Gunny, what's good about the show? You know what we need to do? We need to be like, we need, we need to be like Mr. Canada up there. And we need to go <laughs> over to manscaped.com and put in HGP20 as the, as the promo code and get us uh, some discounts over there and get us some product from Manscaped, one of the leaders in, in that care down there, if you know what I'm talking about, Gunny. The grooming part, yes. Yes. And then you'd be, you could be like, you'd be like Ryan over there and be like Mr. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, personally, I'm a pretty hairy guy. I'll just, I'll admit it, right? So you need to take care of that stuff. And if you go to manscaped.com and use the code HTTP20, you can do that too. So I've been using it. that lotion, guys. It, the lotion is good. Yes, good it's stuff. very soothing down on the nether region, nether regions. And uh, yeah, the the hair and nose trimmer worked pretty well. And I was in there digging around in the nose cave today and no hair is being pulled. I like their uh, technology. They use that little back plastic plate on their uh, trimmer as well. So the product does what it says. Does what it does. Whatever. Go there. Definitely. Manscaped. Awesome. Com. Also, also, guys, I want to give a shout out, a special shout out to all of our Patreons out there. Is the show definitely you know would not be possible without you guys? You know, because it's it's expensive doing this sometimes. You know, getting equipment and this and that. So I don't want to give a shout out to uh, Leahy, the legendary D, Jason Sams, Robert Noble, Sean Petrock, Chad Henley M. Pork Chop Poo, Nipron, the best HGP host ever, Evans Big Girls D Tanaka, Jonathan Titan D Hall, and the first HGP Patreon Bill, still even the biggest D Gardner the second. Thank you guys for your uh, Patreon continuing to support and and if any other listeners out there, if you know if you want to be on that list and get a shout out, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers. And you can sign up over there, and uh, we will get you guys a shout out. Um, also, guys, you guys get you head over to Redbubble as well. We haven't mentioned Redbubble in a while, Gunny. Um, you can get yourself a Horrible Gamers T-shirt. Um, someday Ryan will get his Horrible Gamers shower curtain from Jesus. Yeah, I still haven't seen that, I'm, Jesus. Yeah, I, I don't know. Some someday that might come. It must have got lost in shipping. What do you think? Maybe, maybe. I, I mean, know. I've I've had a pretty good track record with them. I've never had anything lost from their, from them, but. But maybe we'll get Jesus the benefit of the doubt, and maybe maybe it got lost in shipping. Where is it? It's there. Hey, but I do get those uh, emails from Redbubble every so often. You know, either it's weekly or biweekly, where you know everything is twenty percent off. Or you know, yeah. So there's always a lot of good deals going on for whatever you're buying over at Redbubble. And just one quick thing, guys, at the end here, and just uh, follow us over at Twitter at underscore Horrible Gamers. Leave us some reviews on iTunes, Spotify. I think 
Does Google, I can't remember if Google lets you leave Google reviews. Google doesn't have it. That's no. the one that does not. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys have the opportunity to leave reviews, you know, preferably five stars. If not, you know, just be honest. We want, we want you guys to review us. We want to see what you guys think. And, and we definitely see those and, and check them out. But, uh, and just to point out here, Mayo, the, on the Spotify podcast, I think it's just on, on smart devices such as iPads, tablets, phones. You can leave five stars on Spotify. Nice. Anyways, um, I know we're here talking about video games. You know, um, I played some games. I know, I know Ryan's played some games. And and Gunny's tried to play games. I don't know. He's he's getting <laughs> he's getting. I mean, we're just kind of talking off screen here before the before the show. And uh, Ryan and I kind of think Gunny just leaves the title screen on, and we just think he's playing because he never answers our messages. We try to contact this guy. Yeah, and, uh, and he, Xbox he's parties, just, whatever it is, Discord. Yeah, invites and things like that. And you know, it's funny because I think uh, it's because I know Discord. I have it just kind of tied in with everything, mm-hmm. and I haven't tied in uh, PlayStation at all, but. But it just shows me playing satisfactory all the time, right? Because I think Steam takes precedent over everything. So well, it, for it simple, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, right. It's PC, right? Uh, no, I was playing Dante's Inferno today. I had already started that game a while back, so I fired up my Xbox 360. Uh, I know we're not in the what we played section today, but it was like, yeah, and. Uh, I was just kind of doing some old school gaming, not retro gaming, but old school gaming today on my 1080p, you know, big Sony living room TV today. And, you know, it just, yeah, <laughs> that system, I wouldn't say that game, but yeah, just that system does not, you know, it kind of holds up, but playing on an old clunky 360 controller with a freaking chat pad connected to it, it uh, definitely brought back memories. Why yeah. would you have the chat pad connected to it still? I, I think what it is, is the way I have everything kind of set up, I've got shit. I've got DJ Hero. I've got it. And everything's kind of like messaging on Xbox 360, Gunny. <laughs> who are you going to message who that you need <laughs> yeah. a chat pad? You're like mad messaging with a chat pad. Oh, you know what I did say? <laughs> so, no, in order to, you know, if you log out for a while or whatever, it wants your email and password. Yeah. So, and I think I tried it just kind of using the old you know, left and right on the D pad today. Then I was like, wait, fuck, I'm, I got the pad, but you know how the old school way you have to disconnect it and then plug it back in again in order to to activate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you know, like it definitely brought back memories to try to get that thing to work. Um, But I would say the difference too today was like, wait, I need some cheater glasses to see the little letters and numbers. Cause you know, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm an old man gunny. So Yeah. That's how it goes. But yeah, Dante's Inferno, it's, that's a classic. Yeah, that's when back when EA made good games, you know? Hmm. All right, Mayo, you gonna, what else have you been playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we were just going to jump up in the goodness. No, I'm going to no, just hijack in, you. In, in Jesus' spot, and what Jesus would say at this point right now, he's like, guys, I have not played a whole lot of games. <laughs> um, no, but you played a lot of games this week. I, I played a little bit. Um, I actually, uh, have not played any apex this week i actually kind of stopped playing apex for the week and then went ahead and jumped into cyberpunk some more um pretty much most of my week has been cyberpunk when i could play um made quite a bit of progress i you know and gunny i've never had any issues with that game now like i've had no glitches i've had no crazy things yeah. happen everything has been smooth like it, it's ran really really well um I do ha- run it with ray tracing off. I did go ahead and turn that off, but I'm getting a constant like 120 frames. Um, the game, you know, it still looks really good without the ray tracing. You know, I have the graphics maxed out and everything else. And, and I don't know, it just, I'm enjoying the game. Um, you know, I'm still not real super far in. I did get to a part where um, it was kind of interesting. It's like you end up meeting these one group, this one group, and uh, I think it's called the Voodoo Boys. And you end up having to go to this old mall for them and, and get rid of the what they call the animals. And you end up doing this big shootout in this mall. So it's a kind of a fun way you're like going in, you're killing all these guys, and they're kind of trying to flank you and your tech nipple ones. But then you get to the end, you got to fight this boss lady, and she's like this big, incredible hawk-looking wrestler. It's like in this middle area. And I'm just like shooting and shooting and shooting her. And it's, it's not doing much damage at all. And she can move like super fast, like a flash. So she's like a straight up, like a superhero in this game. 
and she just kind of hard to hit and i'm like doing some damage i think she had like some kind of hammer or a sledgehammer or something and but she would kind of hit the ground as you you know and as she would kind of speed up towards you so you're trying to dodge that but uh she kicked my butt like the first time and the second time i ended up just getting the katana out even though i didn't like spec any points in the in the sword i think just did some massive damage and i'm really starting to think now i should have spec my character into the sword and i might respec it because that sword is just so much damage compared to the guns and you have to worry about ammo and everything else because that you can just swing and block you know so you can you just it, just go to town that way because like yeah, I, said, I, was I was talking to loaded Ghost clips Nico and he was telling me that 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 you know the what's his name when you meet him in the kind of near the beginning of the game or whatever that you should get his friends katania and then i don't know what do you do do you upgrade the katana like he said it's pretty op I think it's uh, you have to eventually do some kind of missions to get it from him, like later on in the game. And then he he showed it to me, and it was like a maybe like an epic level, but it did like five hundred some damage, you know, his base damage. And he was just showing us like he's you gotta watch this, you gotta see this. So he started streaming the game on Discord, and you know he's cutting everybody's heads off in like one swipe and stuff. So he's like, look how amazing this thing is, you know. So. He was having a good time with it. So that's what made me kind of think about trying it against his boss because she just kind of wanted to bum rush you all the time. And and this bullet's trying to hit her because she would kind of blur and, and move and kind of shift around, you know, and then you have the limited ammo. I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm just going with the sword, <laughs> you know, and, and it worked like a charm. It, it, it mowed through her pretty quick, but I just, I don't know. I'm really enjoying this game still. I did kind of uh, give up using the controller. I was doing mouse and keyboard and then using the controller to drive, but, but I got kind of lazy because I would put the controller down when I got done driving, and I go do some missions when the controller would turn off. So then I get back into the car, I'd have to sit there and turn my controller back on, wait for it to connect, and then you know hit the button so it registers the controller, and then just kind of drive around. So I just got tired of doing that. So I just started learning how to drive with a mouse and keyboard, <laughs> and it's a, it's a little different. It, it's not horrible. Um, I do run into some stuff here and there, but. Um, it is it's definitely maybe, manageable. Maybe just a a quick tip I, that I've seen other people do, and, and that's getting one of those uh, longer. Is it the mini USB that connects to the controller? Yeah, I probably should. I, I think have it one, just actually. constantly stays on, even if you've got a battery or no yeah. battery in, in the controller itself. But it doesn't it doesn't shut off after a certain time. Yeah, I think actually my phone charger was what I typically use. I use my my phone charger cord when I'm using the PlayStation controller because that's how I connect it to my PC. I I connect it wired. And, and do it that way. So, yeah, I should probably I could probably do that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and they make those things like you know, like four feet, six feet long. So you know, yeah, you get a lot of room. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, course, I'd never even yeah. give that a thought. So yeah, I definitely have to give that a try. Um, yeah, they won't they won't shut off. As far as I know, I've never seen it shut off. And kind of toward the toward the back half of the week, um, I decided I had my kids over at the house and. I took my son back out to the uh, the eighties bar arcade thing. It's open to minors during the day, then it's like twenty one and up after like eight PM. And so uh it's it's cheap entertainment. I go over there and uh you know, you get all the games are free. So you just hit the start button on the credits thing and, and you get the credits and as long as you're buying drinks and, and the and the drinks are pretty inexpensive. Um since I had my son with me, you know, it was like soda and it was like a dollar, maybe a drink. So I think I bought like nine or 10 drinks between me, him and his friend. And I spent like maybe $10 for like two and a half hours of game time. Nice. So it was nice. And uh, they just have a lot of those really good games. You you need to talk about those old games. We played some Frogger. Um, I, I showed the kids how it was done. And uh, oh, what game was that? Oh, it was Miss Pac-Man. My, my son dropped on right away and. Uh, he he played it, and, and we were both trying. All trying to get the high score, and like right away, I like tripled the high score on the game, and so then they all were trying to beat it for a little while, and they finally gave up. And they're like, "Old school gamer champion over here," <laughs> you know. And <laughs> Boomer yeah. and his old school Stone Age games, you know, making fun. But um, we played a lot of uh, uh, Centipede. They they were really like the trackball and that kind, of, you know, that cabinet and stuff, and kind of a different way of controlling for them. And so they they thought that was neat, and then. We ended up in the one corner, and they had a uh, a Nintendo 64 over there with uh, Smash Brothers playing. So we ended up playing Smash Brothers for probably a good hour 
on that on it's like on a big screen. I mean, that game just looks so bad anymore, and it's so hard to control with that 64 controller. Yeah, but, but it was a rough. good time, and and so we continued to play there, and then we also played uh, some NBA Jam. Uh, play, played some three player NBA Jam, which kind of taking turns who had two people on one team and stuff, you know, and uh, and just from there we just kind of played a couple other games. So we end up we end up going back home, and the next day my son's still here, so he he fires up the switch. And we had the the Smash Brothers on there, you know, the newest one. And so he ended up playing quite a bit of Smash Brothers that day and just, just having a good time with that game. Um, he's he's way better than I am, but I told him the other day, I'm going to secretly start playing in the background and just get better at the game and then whoop his butt the next time I see him because he plays it quite a bit. Man, I could definitely see like Smash Brothers on, you know, if they had some kind of PC port, almost a free to play, uh, you know, you know, an esports sort of thing, you know? Man, that would just be awesome. But yeah, Nintendo would never allow that. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah, they do have that, like a tournament. Wouldn't be able I've to stream it, seen, can't make money off of it. You I've know, seen different thing, tournaments still. and stuff like that done when my son's here, he watches them. Um, and they also have that Nickelodeon game is like Smash Brothers. I cannot remember the name of it right now. Um, something Brawl, maybe? Uh, it plays just like Smash Brothers. And it has... Uh, There's character. knockoffs out there. Yeah, and it's it's actually supposed to be really good. Um, it kind of died off in popularity, but a lot of a lot of the streamers were streaming it for a little while there, and and we also own that on on Steam, but I I've never played it, so I can't really like speak a whole lot on a whole lot. I've just seen it. It has like Ninja Turtles on it. It has like SpongeBob. Um, it has uh, oh I can't remember who else. Uh, you meet it over the run. Um. I don't have SpongeBob, man. You gotta have SpongeBob Racing, SpongeBob, uh, yeah, Smash Brothers. I mean, it's got a, it's probably an RPG. Yeah, well, I can't remember who else was on there, but the the Wild Thornberries was on there. Um, a couple other just, uh, Cat Dog was another one, I think. But, uh, Hey Arnold and Arnold, like the one girl from Hey Arnold and stuff was. Oh my gosh, Hey Arnold, yeah, yeah, still uh, around, huh? Yeah, evidently. But. I mean that's that's pretty much all I've been playing. Oh, I did I did sit back and uh, the one night we said we were streaming with Nico and and Jesus was on, and uh, talked him into streaming the uh, uh, diplomacy is not an option. Um, I'm sure he'll probably talk about that next week when he comes back to the show. But it kind of triggered to me. It made me feel like uh, they are billions. So I re-downloaded that game on Steam and kind of fired that back up. I didn't play it very much. But it, it felt just kind of a lot like that game, and I don't remember. And they, uh, they are billions having a difficulty option at the very beginning of the game. I could be wrong, but maybe that's something they patched in later. Cause I just remember the game being really hard. Um, but when you first fired yeah. the game up, it had a difficulty option, so you could do easy or or like a normal and a hard and like an even harder level. But I just went ahead and just played it on normal. And I, I played through the first round where you do the first city and you you go through the you know. You have so much time, basically, before waves and waves and waves of, of basically infected people or zombies try to come and break through all your defenses and, and get to your town, you know. And Okay, oh. oh, so this is like the game I, I really enjoyed. So this is, might be up right up my alley. Was it, um, it was Be Castled that I really like. Yeah, Be Castled is a good one as well. Yeah. What are you going to say, Ryan? Nothing, I... I... Okay. You guys can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we you hear were, you. You were, you were gone yeah. there for a minute. I was trying to talk to you guys for a bit, and it wasn't coming through. Nothing like, was muted. muted. It's, it's yeah, the power. The, the powers of Jesus. He's back there muting you. He, he's like a, <laughs> he's he had you unplugged. Muting me. He drove up to Canada. Yeah, he's, he's hiding like, behind your desk <laughs> right now. He's, and he's he's supposed supposed you to remember, he's supposed to come kick me out of Canada. That's right. He owns it now. That's where he's at right now. We didn't want to tell you, <laughs> he's, but he's he's probably behind your desk right now, unplugging your stuff. Oh no. Hopefully, hope, hopefully we don't lose Ryan. But, <laughs> you got anonymous. He's hacking you. But uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I've been playing. You know, this week, um, it's it's mostly been cyberpunk, and you know, spend that little bit of time in the bar arcade and and getting reacquainted with some of them old games and how bad they control. You know, yeah. And you look at the games, and you're like, oh, this looks so easy. You know, how could how could uh, Donkey Kong be very difficult? You just got to jump a couple barrels to get to the top. You try that game and move that joystick yeah. and try to climb a ladder and it's not precision like you would think, you know, yeah. I mean, you can, it's definitely not, 
Uh, the other one I played was uh, Rampage. They had Rampage World oh, Tour there. I love and Rampage. I, I had a lot of fun doing through that one, you know. Not 30 frames either, yeah. Yeah, jumping on top of the building and punching it from top down to destroy it faster, you know, and, you know, picking the people off the ground and eating them and stuff. And, and the little, and the, and the sexy lady in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a good, that game's a good time. Um, I also had that one there as well, but, uh, so, and they, I know Ryan, they, your favorite too. They have a lot of pinball machines there. Um, yeah, th- those you have to pay separately. Um, so we didn't oh, play really? any pinball, but they have a lot of good ones. I think they're like they range. I want to say like around a dollar per game. I don't know if so that's good the, or bad, yeah, but that's 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 typical. You get a yeah. a buck a buck a play. I, I would say yeah. they probably have but, 30, 30 or forty machines there. Yeah, so a lot of Star Wars. Yeah, that's good. I think they had at least one Star Wars. They had like an Adams Family only, one. And... There's only two, I think, Gunny. Two or three Star Wars. Uh, it depends on if you count the 80s ones that are like half, half screen, half pinball machine. There's a couple of those that are Star Wars. You know, I brought the that up because of pinball machine. I think there's only two of them. I brought that up because of pinball effects. But I yeah, know that's, that's virtual different. versus yeah, that's real. Virtual. Because there's so many on, yeah, that they have on. Indiana Jones comes out next week, or this week, the end of this week, I think. For Pinball uh, FX. Oh, Pinball FX? Yeah, I yeah. saw that tweet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there's so many different pinball packs and things like that that, that are out there. Yeah, there's nothing like the real thing. You should have played some, Mayo. Yeah, yeah, I just I didn't have any cash on me. I could have got some cash. Here's here's the ones I had just real quick. I uh, just uh, they had the Walking Dead, yeah, um, Walking Dead theater fun. theater magic, love theater magic. Tears of the cool. Arabian Nights, yeah, Tales from the too. Crypt, Star Wars the Stern version, yep, um, Star Trek T and G, yeah, there's a bunch of Star Trek ones. Um, Iron Maiden, Medieval Madness, Monopoly, oh, Medieval Madness, Mousing Around, Roller Games. Guardians of the Galaxy. Gilligan's- Roller games is kind of fun. Yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, if you if you learn how to play it, yeah, it can be fun. Gilligan's Island. That's a new table. Okay. Um Getaway, Fish Tales, Deadpool, ACDC, Adam's Family, Attack from Mars, Bonsai Run, and I think it's Bobby Orr Power Play. I don't think I've ever played the last two. The Bobby Orr power play is like a hockey player, maybe? Is yeah. That, is that yeah that correct? Okay. It looks like a pitcher. A like hockey, hockey one, player. but I've never played it. Um, but yeah, so I played all the other ones, though. Yeah, a good chunk. Uh, some of the good games, too. They they had the X-Men fighting, you know, arcade cabinet. Uh, the yeah. WrestleMania cabinet. They have... Uh, oh. My my son loves the topper game. It's like a bar, like a bar Root topper. topper. Yeah. This one's like a Budweiser topper, they called it, actually. Yeah. It was originally... It was it turned into root beer tapper like to be more kid friendly, but it was nice. originally a, a bar tapper game. Yeah. They had uh the Ninja beer Turtles tappers. game. The, the, is, I don't know if it was Turtles in Time, I think it was, right? Yeah. The four player arcade one. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. they had some spy hunters, space invaders. They had the Simpsons game. Uh they had Punch Out, yeah, the fun. the arcade version of Punch Out. Cubert is another one my son loves. Like he he loves playing oh, really? He's like the Cubert's awesome. <laughs> uh, they had Robotron. Uh, they had Miss Pac Man. They had Off Road. That one with the the four steering uh, wheels and the top down of the, the trucks. Um, they had Super NBA Sprint. Jam. They had uh, uh, Might and Magic yeah, or got- Magic Sword. Uh, I don't know if you remember oh, that one or not. They have Maximum Force. They had Mortal Kombat one, two, and or they had Mortal Kombat one and three. Moon Patrol. Um, they had Gauntlet, which is you know we had we played some Gauntlet. That's that's a good time as well. Yeah, um, Frogger. The Frogger table they had it's a, one of the table ones. So you sit down oh, yeah, and, the and you have the cabarets uh, on each end on each side. You know you, you yeah. play two player and you can sit down and, and play. Uh, they had Defender. They had uh, Assault Asteroids. Asteroids is kind of hard to play. But I think it had a rollerball if, if I remember. Yeah, right. it should have a trackball. Yeah, yeah. And they had Burger Time Centipede and stuff. So. Do you remember Hit the Ice? No, off the top of my head. Hockey game and it had trackballs. Oh, heavy. Oh, it was really good. That was a great game. God, I, I think I remember that. 
It's like he got, he got the he got the fat guy and the skinny guy. Skinny guy's really fast, but he gets knocked down easy. The fat guy's really slow, but he can knock people over real good. And then there's like the medium guy. It's like your shooter. Hit the ice. Hit the ice. Yes. That was a cabinet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then I guess one He's of the games there. Wars. One of the games. It was a new game. And it was, uh, is it Killer Queen? I think it's called. Or Killer Queen. Or Killer gosh, Queen Black. Yes, Killer Queen Black. So they had, a, they had two cabinets there. And they're actually having uh, a leagues there for that game. But they were charging for that game to play as well. You had to pay a dollar, I think, to play that game. But that that looked interesting. We didn't try it. Um, I know that's uh, on Steam. So it was just like the classic stuff that they had on, like, like free play, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I said pretty much the only thing that you had to pay for is the pinball and the uh, the, the Killer Queen Black. But everything yeah. else, everything else was included. You know, See, that's what's great about my my the place I go to. Um, it's not public it's it's private and it's like 10 bucks and you get like snacks you can eat and you pop you can drink and all the tables are on free play and there's probably about 75 tables in that place nice it's it's just massive yeah. um we do have a couple other options around here in columbus actually we have one that's called pins mechanical and it's also attached to our arcade it's in a couple of our uh one of our big shopping areas and another area i like to go to it's like a really rich area um it's like a little I don't know. It's like a city street. It's all brick road and it's like restaurants down both sides. It's a bunch of big, you know, fancy restaurants, expensive restaurants. And they have this, it's like miniature bowling. The pins mechanical is really neat. It's like the, the bowling ball is like the size of maybe like a coconut. Mm-hmm. And the lanes, oh, yeah. the yep. lanes probably like maybe, ball, maybe 10 I've feet long. And, and, and the pins are like real thin. Like they're like, uh, like a cardboard cutout almost. And they're attached to this thing from above. When you hit them and they kind of flip up, it's really neatly done. And actually, I it's really smart. I think it's really good for like kids because you know, like how when you get to go to a real bowling alley and then kids just struggle to get that ball down the lane. This right, is yeah. so small and it's such a small ball. It's a lot easier for them to to do something like that. And they have a couple of them around this area now and they seem to be getting really popular. Um, hmm. The new pins, the, it's by me. I have not been to this one yet. I get It's two stories. And I guess it's got a lot more pinball machines and arcade machines in that one. So I need to get That's awesome. check, with like check that one out. So with what's go- been going on, it's like I'm glad to see places like that are still around because they could have easily died. Yeah, and this is brand new. Like they just built it. It's a brand making new building and everything. Like it, it's yeah, it's, it looks like a pretty wild place. And again, it's a and it is a, a that one is 21 and up after 8 p.m. So it, it turns you know to kind of a party yeah. place every every night and it doesn't open till four like four in the afternoon and it's open yeah, till like three in the morning so we have one close to me called the uh, eight bit bean and it's like a cafe but it's an arcade um and they have a bunch of pinball and a bunch of like you have to you have to buy uh coins to use for them but mm-hmm. uh they're not on free play but it's like a coffee place you can go to and they don't open till four either. Same thing. It's funny because we don't have anything like that in my area. I don't live in a very heavily populated area. Um, you know, it's in the north of the Bay Area. So lots of cows out here. But, um, you know, but if I go, I don't know, I'd say an hour without any real traffic to go to Oakland or something. I know they've got. Yeah. I don't know if it's an arcade museum or just yeah, go to you know, a or just play uh, pinball games, but yeah, and then there's probably one in San Jose and other places, but nothing near me where I don't have to cross a bridge and pay you know a toll or something. But it'd be nice, you know. Remember the old good old days of the arcade and the malls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 pretty much all I've been playing. What about what about you, Gunny? Uh, I haven't been playing anything, just title screen, you know, let it run. Um, yeah, which is what I do sometimes, but. Don't you worry about burning? No. Aren't you worried about the title screen burning into your OLED? <laughs> yeah, I don't see, I don't have the OLED here. It's at the house. Oh. And that is, yeah, it's funny because remember I told you that that TV is amazing, but it's, it's almost like too large for some of the games that I do want to play. Mm. It probably would have worked with like an Elden Ring, but. 
I think I was going to try and get into shooters, you know, like, and it never did work out, you know, with like Warzone or whatever. You know, I ended up just always playing here on my on my screen, you know, my 165 hertz screen. So, but no, uh, whatever. I've got that LG, you know, the cheap LG I got from Target, and it suffices for what I need on my Xbox Series S. Um, but yeah, speaking of that, um, yeah, I have been playing some Elden Ring. Um, I did, I know me and Ryan, you know, we were talking about it earlier, you know, off air, but I did start another class. I think I was Warrior. Did I say I was Warrior the first time? I can't remember. And then I changed it to Vagabond. And, you know, this is after watching YT vids, right? And saying, okay, I'm going to go, you know, kind of go this this certain path and, you know, how to start out and go do the tutorial, which is, you know, again, nothing. It, the game doesn't tell you anything, right? So, no, it the, But it's kind of add on what I did last week was, hey, I'm just going to go out there and kind of do whatever I can. You know, the touch of grace, you know, you're kind of your save points. I did some of those. And and if you do look at your map, it's kind of obvious, like it's kind of saying like, hey, you know, like there are these things on the map that just kind of show up. You know, there's a shape of a church and a shape of like a, you know, something else. So it tells me that that there's there might be something it. over there. Yeah. So I saw the hint. So when I watched the YouTube video, the tutorial, it it showed like, you know, go here, go here, go here. Right. Um, as a recommendation, I'm like, well, yeah, that was pretty self-explanatory. Um, and so I kind of did. But it, I guess it really isn't, though, Gunny, because like if you if you didn't know to go there. You would just start wandering around like I did and just. You're yeah. clueless. You're literally clueless. Like for someone true. who has never played a game like this before, you know, you would op- be in this open world going, okay, where am, where am I supposed to go? And then the first thing you're going to run into is a knight on a horse that's going to one hit yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? so, it's like, yeah. it's such a kick in the balls, like for anybody starting that game, not knowing what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, you, you, oh, yeah. you're released into this beautiful world. It's, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It, it's, you know, a beautiful world. You go into this beautiful world. And the first thing that you come across, the, the what's the first thing in a video game you're going to do when you see something? Attack it, right? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's great. Go lesson hit it. number one about Dark Souls. Hit it six times and kill it. Don't attack anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just run run and dodge run <laughs> run away and dodge like, and get the hell out of there as quick as possible yeah um, it's funny you mentioned that because of that night right i talked about it last week and i thought it was pretty obvious right like i know from software and you yeah. know yeah. But that's what i'm saying and, think yeah. about it as a person that's going into it without a clue you know what i mean without knowing that that's what happens in these kinds of games some guy, some 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 kid, for instance, okay, his mom picked it up for him. Yes. You know what I mean? And he throws this game in, and he has no idea what it is. And that's the first thing he runs into. You know what I mean? Like, that's... But that's, the, that's how From is, you know what I mean? And it's like, you have to learn that. And you really do. You have to learn about yeah. how these games work. Because it's different. You know, it is. Yeah, it's, it's very different than most games. Like it's, and, it's basically just go in there and see what you find. Yeah, the, the vibe and, I kind of get though is like it. It is difficult, but I, I from what I hear from people, it's like the more you explore, and the more you can kind of level up slowly. Mm-hmm. The yep. you you can go back. Like you may have a really hard time fighting these bosses. That's what, what I'm saying. seeing. You can eventually go back and you can beat them a little easier. You just got to have that mentality of get yourself even stronger. If you go back and yeah. you fight that guy and you still can't beat him, like you were saying, Ryan, go explore some more, go kill some more enemies, go level up a little bit. Find the enemies that you back. can kill and then just watch out for those enemies and attack them and kill them off. Like there was this one area in the very beginning where you go down a hill and there's like a little, almost like a little town there. And that town is full of knights. Okay. When I first went into that town, I got destroyed. 
the dude blew the horn and 50 guys yeah. came and just fucking destroyed me. I can walk into that town now and kill everybody in it. Just like that. Like easily. But when I started, that was a scary place to be. Now it's not so scary anymore. You know? Yeah, so it, it's definitely about... an idea of how to deal with it. But there's other things in the game that I haven't figured that out yet. And that's part of the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's part of the game to figure out what you're supposed to do. Because it's not really telling you much. It's not giving you very much direction at all. Even in the little bits of story that you get, you have an idea. There is an a path that you're that it's pushing you on but if you just follow that path you're gonna get way too far before you know what i mean before you're gonna start getting destroyed again so you kind of need to sit back in that beginning area and deal with the deal with what you can deal with at that point in time until you're strong enough to go deal with the bosses and then once you can deal with the bosses then you can move on to the next area you know what i mean like but it doesn't tell you that because you can just go wherever you want. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what draws me to the game is that ex- that exploration. And and also yeah. too, I think didn't I read um the game when you say you, you don't have a map right away and you have to find an area where the map is at or something like that, right? That that town that you I was talking find. about that you have to go into, that's where you find your map. And then yeah, the map that's doesn't where I'm at. have anything on it really, right? And then you kind of have to like sure. discover you you run around the map, and when you find this stuff in in game, is it's when not it your typical in your map. No, it's not your typical map. All that you're gonna see on your map are your sites of grace, which are your bonfires, your place to level yeah. up, kind of thing, your checkpoints, and that's it. There's no quest markers. There's no real buildings or anything like that you'll see like little shadows like gunny was saying of oh there's like a building here that's there but it's very vague Uh it's not an assassin's creed game where there's shit all over your map (laughs) it's it's and you have to go right you mentioned it's it's a fog of war it's very plain you don't need a legend for this map it's got your points on it and that's it that's all that's on it and and you can kind of get an idea of okay in this area is swampy and this area is foresty this area is you know like fucking hellscape <laughs> you know what i mean like you right you can kind of look at the map and see that and you get to know what what areas are are in where what spots it's, right it's so, funny on uh, you mentioned that because bios. on on twitter today jason schreier uh, tweeted uh what Elden ring would look like if uh ubisoft made it yeah. And it basically put all these question marks on the game screen, like in his DUI. Yeah. Yeah. And it said, yeah. like, go here or something like that. But then, like, other people were kind of defending, like, the Ubisoft games. They're like, just because Elder Ring doesn't have any of that stuff, they're like, I personally like the way, like, Assassin's Creed does that sometimes. And so, I do, too. So some people like it, some people don't. But, but you know, it's just right. kind of a, I think in Elden Ring, it's nice because it's like an atmosphere kind of thing, in a way. It kind of adds to the. I feel like it makes it makes the game a little more accessible to people that will drop it right away when they when they hit a wall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's all. That's all you're really doing. You're you're making it more accessible to a wider audience. But this game, you know, from f- this developer in in particular, has a type of game that they make, and I maybe that's not for me, and it hasn't been yet until now where I'm actually enjoying Elden Ring as compared to like Dark Souls and all that. I never, I never enjoyed any of them. This one in particular is pulling me in for some reason, but I feel like if there was a little more direction, it would keep me more. You know what I mean? Like it would keep me cause I'd have something to, to move forward with. There is something that to move makes forward sense. with in this, but you just have to keep track of it all yourself. You know what I mean? And, like, and there's I think no, it, but it gives you there's that no quests. There's that no desire to explore too, though. I think that's what keeps bringing you back. You know, yeah. I think that's kind of the thing is it's like, if you've seen it on a map, you may be like, Oh, I don't want to do this yet. No, or I don't want to do that. That's the thing yet, too, though, so. about this game, right? There's no checking th- something off where it's like, I've done that. Right. So I've, I've ran into the same cave like three or four times. And then I get to the bottom where where the first enemies are, and I'm like, 
oh, I did this cave already. I've oh, already no. gotten everything in here. I just, I just wasted and I all this turn time. Around, right. And I gotta turn around and go back. But you can fast travel if you want. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's ways around it. It's just little points of interest like that would be nice, I think. Like, little checks that would say, okay, you've been here. You've finished everything that's here. Or maybe, you like, don't colors need to come in the map back here in the way, like, the map, yeah, the black and white like that, that colors it in or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, just just to check off exploration like a lot of people have been saying oh i i have to keep a journal with elden ring so that i can remember story plot lines that are you know that you don't run into right away you know you run into something and he tells you something but it's like not till like 10 15 hours later that you find the thing that he was talking about and then can you remember what buddy said to you you know what i mean like how, things like that how is the story yeah. that's one thing i've not heard much about this game is the don't story. Know. I, I don't anything. know. Well, I don't really know yet. I haven't, I haven't progressed the story very much because I've been kind of just chilling in one area, trying a lot of to times get myself leveled up. When I see it, it's usually like in a noisy background where there's no volume. Um, the one time I saw it when I was at Dead Bar Arcade, uh, they have streamers on and they had a TV up in the one corner. There was a big TV and somebody was streaming the game, you know, and you, I could see what was going on, but you couldn't hear, you know, hear any of it. And then other times I've seen some just pictures or footage and stuff like that where it's just like a, like an instance. So it doesn't really talk about what, like what the plot line is or like what's going on. It is kind of, you just kind of mm -hmm. see him fighting this individual and that's pretty much all I know, you know, and then, yeah. you know, and then, and then they're complaining about how many times they died against that enemy. <laughs> you know. Well, you're the, you're all I know is you're the tarnished. You're going in to try and, get the Elden Ring or something. I don't know. You're, you're, uh, there's not, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. The story, the story I don't is know either. Yeah. Right? I it mean, doesn't that's, even that's tell you the beginning take. of the game. So it's, it, it's probably, you know, I mean, cause maybe the digital age we live in these days, it's more like, there's a YouTube video on it, guys. Just uh, go over here and check it out. Click on this link. You know, well, but thank God. Thank God. It's more about gameplay. Stuff like that because I don't think I could I don't think I could play this game if it wasn't for that, you know. Like think about trying to play this game before the internet. Yeah. You know oh what I gosh. mean? It would be like, <laughs> in the thought... in the early 90s, uh, late 80s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've got an Obian, like um excuse me, Skyrim, yeah, the Elder Scrolls. I think Skyrim the... had Skyrim had direction, like you know yes. what I mean? Like this direction is telling you where to go. There. This game doesn't do that at all. It's just this like, will... go and see what you can find. You're going to run into some shit that's going to kill you. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. You, you're the, the first thing, for instance, okay? I told this story to you guys earlier. I'm, I'm wandering around just trying to collect and explore. And I come running across, you know, like gold runes and stuff, little shiny things on the ground. I'm picking them all up. So I find this one little shiny thing in a corner, like up against the wall. There's nothing, you know, I'm going over. I pick up a little shiny thing. And as I'm turning around, a bear falls from the fucking sky and just <laughs> one shots me like just, yeah. hey, buddy, boom, you're dead. <laughs> and it, I was just like, drop bear. Activate. I didn't even know it was a drop bear. He fucking fell from the ceiling. It was insane. I couldn't believe it. And uh, just one shot at me and killed me. But at least I picked up that golden rune before he killed me. And you have to get back and get to your stuff, right? To yeah. Get, if you yeah. die. Um, I don't know but but the bear wasn't there. That, but... The bear wasn't there the second time I showed up. <laughs> or I ran away from him really fast. I can't remember. It was one or the other. And that's the it was thing just too, a is weird you can, moment. You can lose some progress, too, if you die to like an enemy, right? And the enemy doesn't if leave, you... and you can't get past that enemy, and you can't get to your souls. Because if you die Most a second of the time, they're time... gone, right? Most of the time, there's no one really near your souls. Like you, you are your runes. You, yeah, you have a like good a, chance at grab, grabbing them again easily. But like you, even like if you just go running by on your horse and pick it up as you run by them, you know what I mean? Like that's it's pretty easy to get back to them. But every once in a while, you will like run into something stupid on your way there or something, and it'll kill you, and then you'll lose those runes because you didn't make it back. And, and you have to up, do this off memory, right? correct? It doesn't tell you on the map. No, like, no, here. it does give you oh, it, it does, does give okay. you a little a little icon That's on nice, your on your so you kind of know uh, where to go there. HUD. Yeah. You know where to go to pick it up. Can you bank the runes or whatever so you're not keeping them all on your person? No, you just gotta no. spend them. 
So it's like currency or something? It's currency and your level up. And your yeah, XP. Yeah, so you might as well, you know, why would you hold on to them? Because you're going to level. So you might as well level. You you want to be leveling at first. And, like, don't worry about buying stuff, really, I don't think. Because you're going to pick stuff up as you're going along. More than enough stuff. Um, yeah, I would say when you go to your uh, sites of grace, you go in there and you go to level up. And you spend... You spend it on your uh, points to level up. <clears throat> and then you can upgrade. Uh, when you find golden seeds, you can upgrade. You can get more um, flasks. Uh, elf flasks and, and mana flasks. Yeah, that's what I did with my, my new Vagabond. Is That's what I chose as my gift is the, uh, the golden seed. So I can actually replenish. Yeah, my flasks. Um, yeah, that's that's my plan. I'm gonna kind of go on a little, you know, a little bit of the tutorial, uh, but not not follow it all the way through. It's just more, you know, like like I was telling Ryan off air is that, you know, I'm on my way to get that that long sword. I mean, I think it's from that area that you talked about, Ryan, where you come into that village and there's a lot of soldiers there that that'll just destroy you. But is it that, guys, is it down in a uh... In a cave underneath? No. No, it's actually up top. Okay. Well, when you go in there, I think you hang a right in the first little section of the building, and there's there's a stairway that goes downstairs, and there's a little section down in there, and you'll unlock some stuff too. And then if you kill all the guys, both those, uh, there's two big truck things that the giants pull along, chariots. Yeah. Right, that's yeah, yeah, that's one of you them. You can get some stuff out of those, and the map is right in the middle. There's a big, huge post in the middle, and there's, that's where you get your map from. Okay, I thought you had to buy the map. No. Or, okay, maybe it's a separate one, because the it recommended purchasing at least one map for 200 gold or whatever it is you pick up. But well, don't you then have I to wouldn't. then go to the site to then activate... You know, to kind of get rid of that fog of war, to kind of explode more. But I don't know. There's just so much more well, to this game. As you walk around, you'll you'll get rid of the fog of war. As you okay. explore, the fog of war will go away. But it doesn't do anything. Like fog of war is just basically telling you you haven't been there yet. That's it. Yeah. You know. And once you've been there, you got to explore the area and see what's around because you'll find like caves and fucking enemies that'll kill you yes i know that first that first cave after the dude on the horse or whatever i try to fight that enemy i'm like i'm gonna try and kill this guy i almost got him i almost got him but yeah i kind of gave up after a bit i even went back in there with a shield and i know it's before i kind of even level up but i'm like no i'm gonna take him out but he finds a way to just fuck me up every time and every time, yeah. every time. and it it's not frustrating me or whatever, because I know I'm not, I'm supposed to level up first, but I'm like, oh, like, yeah, it's kind of designed this way. I get it. So yeah, it's I'm good, able to, go, to, it's all good to go in and just see what the boss does anyways. You know what I mean? Cause you got to learn, you got to learn the patterns. If you don't the learn the patterns, are, they're just going to destroy you every time, but you got to, you got to know, Hey, he's going to do this move and then he'll do this move, this move and that move. You know, that's what it is. Because I order. end up, and then, you know you gotta roll, 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 and then attack, 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 roll, 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 attack, 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 attack. You know what I mean? You get and to know yeah, the patterns the thing, that he does. The other thing I learned too about you know that boss and other bosses um, is when I'm attacking, I notice if I if I kind of pause for just a second before his his uh, another attack, uh, you'll again you'll it's almost like you'll stagger him, right? And so oh, then yeah. you'll be able to attack three more times, one, two, three, right after the first time. Uh, the other thing I learned is I keep flinching, right? So it, it is about getting good, right? Because I flinch every time the guy moves. I'm like, ah, I'm like rolling back, right? Rolling back, rolling back. And with that boss that we're talking about in that cave is where, okay, definitely don't keep rolling back back right directly straight back where 
it's kind of like going to be like other bosses where I need to roll to my right or to my left, right? It depends on which way he's swinging. So, yeah, when you, I need to when you stuff. roll, you're you're invincible when you're in the middle of a roll, pretty much. So there's a there's a short period of time when you're rolling that no matter what you will you won't get hit, and you have to time that roll for his hits. You know what I mean? Like yes. if you get it at the right point, you won't get you won't take any damage at all. That, that's the key that I'm 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 getting there. I'm I'm learning that because you know it's like hard, let's say it's, it's hard the boss timing. Will, like it's really yeah. The boss will go guys. back for a swing. That doesn't mean roll now, right? It just means he's going back for the swing. It's mm-hmm. when he's swinging, right? So I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm trying to get that trying to get that time down where I gotta stop flinching and being you know just ah I keep you know pre rolling you know and I'm like no don't don't stop so. Yeah, it's all about timing and just getting good. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting good, man. I'm getting better. I saw. So uh, yeah, this is not an Assassin's Creed game. Twitter as well. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. A guy went to attack like a sheep type animal, and he went to do like a, like a lunge attack or something maybe, and it like rolled out of his way and like ran away from him. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he just straight up like you know like lunge attack the air and the thing just. Straight up dodge rolled him, and, yeah, and ran off. And the enemies do that, man. They fucking like do cartwheels and shit. It's crazy. Yeah, and the and and the design of the enemies in this game are fucking amazing. Like they're just really good. That's from that's that's from soft for you, right? Like they, mm-hmm. they're they're their stuff usually looks pretty pretty gory and pretty yes you know, detailed. Really, they are detailed. very detailed for sure. Yeah, uh, I got I got some funny things I was watching. Uh, if any of you know who that Summit One G is, I watch on Twitch. I watch mm-hmm. a lot of Twitch, if, you know. Um, but uh, I also play some games as well. So yeah, he uh, he went back to play this week. But remember, I was talking about last week, and I think it was him and Doctor Disrespect or whatever. You know, kind of rage quitting the game at the beginning of the game. You know, kind of early on, but it's just comical to watch some of these. You know, these CS:GO. Uh, Apex players, you know, like you, Mayo, and, you know, and Warzone players over here trying to play this game. You know, it's not Valorant, right? It's it's RPG, but <laughs> and they're just kind of rage quitting, going, why is the boss so fucking tall? I can't see the top of the boss with his sword, you know, and just just crying like babies, you know, like I would or something, you know, and it's like, yeah, take your medicine, motherfucker, you know, <laughs> it's funny as hell. But yeah, um. I don't know, man. I'm thinking maybe FOV might help a little bit, guys. You know, you fucking PC players, you know, over here with your shooters now trying to play an RPG. Um, but yeah, I love that shit, man. Um, but, you know, I also get a little experience too, like kind of know where, you know, it tells me a little bit of how to handle a boss in, in the future, but I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting better, you know, probably. Uh, I, feel like there's, I feel like there's just so much to learn. About yeah, the there's a lot. What what everything does and what to collect first and mm-hmm. gosh and then you know watching not so much spoilers but just watching people like how do they get so much shit in their inventory with weapons and armor and you know and and just so many other things and I think they did a pretty good job with just the open world yeah uh, sort of it's, things it's amazing it really it's, is yeah and there's. Um, just seeing so many different blood stains on the ground going, why are there so many blood stains over here? What's going on? You know, like, yeah. It means that somebody died a lot. A lot. <laughs> so, well, a lot of people died a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, one yeah, person so. died very painfully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think I'm pacing myself pretty well. I'm not getting too frustrated with it or angry or upset and, you know, throwing the controller. Um, I kind of know what I need to do and, what I need to do to level up. I just need to learn, you know, the enemies first, you know, whether they're knights or, uh, they could be the turtles, right? It could just be fucking tur- or whatever. I don't care. So I'm going to learn these. And he's killing turtles again. I know. I went back today. I'm like, I'm going to kill that turtle again and get his, his turtle shell. <laughs> Cause it's easy. But yeah, even the dogs, man, the wolves, I guess I'll call them wolves, but, uh, they will, they- yeah, they'll fuck you up if you get like four around yeah. you at the same time. You gotta, yeah, when you when a pack comes at you, yeah, you'll die. You better watch out. You better get on your horse. Yeah, and see, I don't have the horse, and they did. They killed me today. I was like, ah, 
I know what it is. Honey, Take them out one at a time. Go to the site of grace. Go to the site of grace. It's actually you haven't made it there yet. After you don't even don't even clear that town first. What I want you to do is there's a cave off to the left as you're coming into that town, coming down that hill. Mm-hmm. Veer off to the left and just go over to the corner by the by the cave entrance. There's a site of grace there. Rest at that site of grace and she'll she'll appear at the site of grace and give you the horse. Mm. OK, yes, I did see that. Video. And you'll have and then you'll have your horse. And you'll be able to. To fucking ride around if you want. Yeah, it'll make things a lot easier. Wait. I went a long time without knowing that. Yeah, I was wandering around on foot for a long time in the beginning. Yeah, I watched. The, I did watch that today. I'm like, oh, OK, shit. I know where I need to go now. So instead of wandering off into other places and getting stomped on by giants and spider enemies. So, but yeah, it's good. Um, the, uh, uh, other than that, I was playing that, uh, every, everybody saves the world or nobody saves the world. Nobody, saves the wor- nobody, nobody, fucking nobody, even nobody saves the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's good. It forces you to play other characters. Like I was playing yesterday, whatever, reaching that level, what is it, level five dungeons or whatever it was, the area in the north of the castle, and I'm still early on. Yeah. Um, damn, what was I playing? Okay, so I was playing the night, and it's like, hey, you know, you kind of need that that purple damage or whatever, and your your knight doesn't have that purple damage, so you're not doing any damage to those enemies, you know? Yeah, but you can go into the go into your weapons and equip something with purple damage yeah what you'll you be able to hit them with the purple damage and kill them a different way wait 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 oh shit you can unlock maybe a i second forgot attack. about it because i put it away because i had to go back and get the mouse or the knight or i mean the archer yeah you could do that but you it could, worked you either way it works back and forth you can but switch be difficult yeah. but when you say you have the knight you know you have like one attack and then you have like say your x attack on your xbox controller and you have your y attack uh, you yes, may not yes. unlock your Y attack, but when you get that Y attack unlocked, you can change it to like one of the mouse's attacks, but it has a yeah. purple on it. So now you have the knight, which has the same kind of attack that the mouse has and the knight's other attack. So then you have kind of a, both of them and then, yeah. you can, then you can start mixing stuff up because later on you get three different kinds of attacks and you can pull three different types of attack into your character. See, all my characters have the two, the ones that I've got unlocked so far, but I don't have the three. Yeah, at least I don't think I do. I think maybe as what maybe B rank, Ryan. You you might remember I more. So yeah, I think it's B rank. And when you get them give up, you the B, third. It'll give you the third one. Yeah, but that that game is is awesome. It's definitely very much in that Diablo esque of things, and recommend playing that. As long as I know it's still on Game Pass. Um. Yeah, the game's yeah. so much fun. It is. I want to play it, co-op with some. I it kind of reminds you, Ryan. Have time. you ever played the game called? Uh, oh, it's gonna. I'm gonna forget now. It's the where you have the shop on, during the day and you go in the dungeons at night. You um, love that game, you, remember, Ryan? Moonlighter. Moonlighter. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's I played the crap out of that. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit in the way it plays. That game is a fun game as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Moonlighter was fantastic. I there was actually an update to that not that long ago. And I never went back to check it out. And then trying yeah, to figure out great. the 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 whole uh, mechanics of the 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 money thing. You know, you go back to your shop and you you're trying to figure out how much to sell stuff for because it yeah. it fluctuates. If you sell too much of it, people quit buying it, or yeah, you know, if yeah. you sell it too cheap, because you know, they don't just tell you. You know, they make that little face. You know, it's like a they super get, happy get, face. Frown, you're like, frown, oh yeah. shit, I sold that thing. You know, the first time you get one, you're like, oh, what do I sell it for? Let me put it for this price. And you think you're putting like a high price on it. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, nobody's gonna pay that. And the guy walks in and he's and like, the guy's super all excited. Happy that he bought it. <laughs> and you're like, so damn cheap. it, I lost out, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And the next time you put it on sale, you like really raise the price and they're like, nobody buys it, you know. So Yeah. Yeah, that's that a, game is great. Yeah, I really like that game. That game is yeah. Is that that's on Game Pass as well, right? Uh, I don't know. I owned it, so I, I own it as well, but I, I remember seeing that on Game Pass. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. So it if you haven't played it, guys, check it out. Yeah, and I think it had some game. some big update recently. 
or at least a few months ago. I think I think they might have added co-op. I can't remember. That I would be say that. I don't. I don't remember. You always say that too. You always have that risk versus reward. You know, you go into the dungeon and you're almost dead, and you can warp out it at any time and take the stuff out. Yeah. Or if you die, you lose everything you had. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. I want to go a little deeper, see what more I can find. You know. Yeah. And then you die, and you're like, no, uh, I had so much stuff. Yeah. Fun that game. game was so good. But uh, yeah, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit, like the art style somewhat, and just kind of, just kind of like I said, the way it played. Not not as big of a scale. I think this game is is way bigger feeling. You know, because those dungeons are huge. On nobody saves the world. You know, they get, they get kind of long yeah. sometimes. Um, they do. Yeah, I'm actually that, remember how OP the the turtle was. He's not OP anymore. No, no, he, no. he lost that OPness. <laughs> I can't walk through this dungeon. I'm stuck on it right now. I got to level up some more. I think, or I can get through it. I think I might have gone a little quick through some stuff with the turtle, and now I've now I've hit a wall again. So I got to figure figure out how I'm gonna get past that. That's kind of where I'm at with that game right now. But yeah, I mean, check it out because it's so much fun, uh, and there's such a variety of different gameplay options and and characters that you, that you can be. Um, it's a lot of fun, man. It is, yeah. Good and dungeon uh, crawler, yeah. I like it. Um, definitely a good game. I would definitely purchase this game. You know, if they ever took it off Game Pass, it's yeah. I think I would too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to have in your library. I think it's just got, and it's one of those games you can kind of step away for a little while, and you, and you can go back and pick it up. You know, I haven't played it for probably yeah. three, four weeks, but I feel like I could jump back in it at any time, and just know right where I left off, and be like, oh, okay, I remember where I'm at, and just go. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Did you yeah, play other than that, no, I haven't really touched Dying Light 2 at all. I, no, uh, me either. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a great game, but I've just been... Is that game, other things, is that game but... kind of dying off a little bit? I haven't heard much about it. You know, I, I don't hear much talk about it in our Discord. I don't hear much talk yeah, about it on the Facebook. I don't think it's or doing I, very good. Um, I don't see much, you know, like streaming. It's... Like When I check on, check on just the browse or whatever on stream or some of the bigger streams, nobody's playing it. So I, I'm just curious is that game just kind of dying off i wonder yeah, yeah. it's you know what it i would way. say like dying light one had if it had like you know if it was kind of like made today or whatever because it had a really decent story and you know it had really good co-op it, the co-op works actually works really good now even with dying light one and yeah it's i don't know i i think the people people don't like the fact that you know, you come into some of these places where you got a mission to do. Well, it's not nighttime. Come back in the nighttime. I think you have to like either go back to basically a base kind of thing. And, and you know, and there's like a bed there and then you have to say, OK, all right, well, you know, sleep till nighttime or whatever. Then go back and do said mission. So, yeah, some of the missions are at night. Some are it doesn't matter. And I don't know. It's. Yeah. I'm I'm sure I'll I'll spend a lot more time with it eventually. You know, once I get my ass kicked in the ring and you know go go back and play something easier. Um, but uh, other than that, I've just been playing uh, Beat Star. You know, on my phone, and yeah, that's that's kind of my mobile game now. Kind of get thing going on with with songs and you know, since I don't play that much, I really don't feel like I need to make any purchases on you know s- some of the music that's really good, but. If you got that Guitar Hero itch, man, go play some Beat Star uh, or a rock band or something. It's a good, it's a good mobile game with uh, good quality music. Popular, but uh, what have you been playing, Ryan? Uh, well, good? besides mostly Elden, Elden Ring, Ring and uh, and uh, nobody saves the world. But I also played Wobbly Life. All right, guys. Oh, your game of the for- year. It's time for Ryan's wobbly life update of the week. You know, and FYI, um, guys, um, before the show started, Ryan was on on the phone with his daughter, <laughs> and they were talking about wobbly life. I'm like, hey, we got her, 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 her games here. I asked her what her game of the year was, and she said wobbly life. Um, but yeah, uh, so the sword, guys, we did it. We finally oh, you got finally the sword. got it. 
Nice. I finally got the sword. I don't know what's left to do in the game now, uh, to be honest. I think we've done all the big things. Um, there's a couple more like little things to do, but they're really tough. I'm having a really tough time with them. Anyways, so the sword, finally. Grabbed the helicopter. Everything was going good. Thunderstorms happening. Islands in the middle of the lake. Land the helicopter. I'm going over to the... I'm going, I got the boat. Take the boat over to the island because the helicopter's too big to land on the island. I climb up. I go to grab the sword. And I fell backwards. Because <laughs> it, it, it's awkward the way this game... Like, do you, you know how like uh, human falls flat kind of feels when you're like walking around and you're all wobbly yeah. and you're grabbing things with your hands and it's all like that. Eh, eh, eh. You know, your arms are kind of flailing everywhere. It's like yeah, it kind of reminds me of that early Octodad stuff, but not that bad. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's like that. You're this little yellow guy that you just all you can do is grab stuff, pick it up and carry it with you. So I fell backwards and and I knocked myself out because if you fall too far, you'll get like stars above your head. And my daughter is just laughing her ass off at me because we've been trying to do this for a long time <laughs> and every time something goes wrong right every time i the, the everything gets together and i have the thunderstorm and i have the helicopter and everything's all set up to go something goes wrong something really stupid like i've i've had a time where i had it in the helicopter and we were flying over to the to the cave that we had to go to into and the fucking sword just slides out there's a door on the side of the helicopter but you can't close it um, and that's the only place you can put the sword. So I'm flying along with the, and I just tilted the wrong way. The sword just fell in the water. Oh and I'm my like, gosh. you can't go in the water in wobbly life. You wobblies can't swim. They, wobblies, they die. No, you'll die. Water. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you can't swim. <laughs> um, you have to be on boats. So that was one of the times, but this time I'm Can you get a boat there. in this game and just boat it across? No, not that kind of game. Yes. Yes. There's boats. I, I had the helicopter, so I took the helicopter. I got to the island that I needed to get to. I grabbed the sword, and I go to put it into a hovercraft. There's a hovercraft on this island. So I put it into the hovercraft, and I'm hovercrafting over to the cave that I got to take it into to load it onto the thing to unlock this new costume. So finally, I get in there. I go to pick up the sword. The fucking sword is stuck between two fucking rungs that I can't get the sword out of. And it's so awkward and I'm in the boat. So I'm still in the water. Okay. I could easily pick this sword up and flip it into the water and I'd have to fucking start all over again. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so my daughter is just cracking up, just laughing at me. Cause I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, don't, don't drop it. Don't fucking i'm trying to pull this sword out of the thing i finally i finally rigged it out of the two seat pieces that were in there and i got it out got it up there i finally get i'm going up the thing that i fell through the floor the last time if you guys remember that story where i fell through the floor and i made it all the way up there so like this point my me and my daughter were both cheering we're like we're there we finally made it it's so great i put the thing on there i get my ghost costume and that's it it's done <laughs> you win yeah you win? so that was that was the wobbly wobbly life story of yeah. this week but i still have to make hamburgers and i still have to making hamburgers is so fucking hard <clears throat> you have a timed thing right you go into the hamburger store like i said this is a this is a picture like a gta map okay there's it's cartoony. It's not realistic looking like GTA. It's stupid cartoony shit. But you have this whole map. You have cars that you can steal off people and they just disappear when you jump into the cars. And you can drive all over this place and there's missions everywhere. If you go into the hot dog store, or I mean, if you go into the hamburger store, you can do a mission where you have to make hamburgers. If you go into the ice cream store, you got to make ice cream. You can't you hold go, up the ice cream guy hold, with a gun. You can't no. just go in there. Give me your fucking ice it's cream. For right now, it's for kids. It's for kids. It's not. Oh. Yeah. So th that's pretty much what, what it is. There's, there's all these missions all around the map that you can do. Um, I, I, 
I've done the UFO one already. Um, so I have the UFO. Maybe I'll tell that story next week or something. Um, but yeah, anyways, so the hamburger thing. I'm trying to make hamburgers. So basically what it does is it gives you a list. It'll it'll show you, hey, you need to make a hamburger. So you need two buns. You need one patty. You need one piece of cheese. You need a piece of tomato and a piece of lettuce. So now there's all these ingredients laid out on the bins and you have to wobble yourself around and try and pick up the right pieces and take them over to this conveyor belt, put them on there. And then you have to push the button and it sucks the stuff in and makes the burger on the other side. You pick up the burger and take it over to the counter. Right. But you have a time limit that you have to do this in and you have to make four, four burgers in like three minutes or something like that. I cannot do it. I get to the last burger and I have like no time left every single time. It sounds... And I just can't figure out how to do it. There is co-op in this game though. So I think maybe this might be something that I might need to do with another player. Sounds like a overcooked mini game. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> little That's bit what we need to do, Ryan. Remember the overcooked there's, days? There's another one. There's do an some... ice cream one and it's so fucking hard because like when you walk, you wobble, right? And, it, and you're carrying ice cream balls in a bowl. And when you wobble, there's physics in this game. The ice cream will just fall out on the floor, and then you have to fucking start all over. Drunk again. cooking with Ryan. It's like, it is. It's like you're walking around drunk. You know what I mean? You have to be so careful, move just so slowly. And it's so fucking tedious. But it's so funny at the same time. Um, but that's it. I'm not going to talk about wobbly life anymore today. You'll have to wait till next week for another I'm wobbly still in, life story. folks. But that's all I've been playing, guys. Everybody's, yeah, so anticipating here. Yeah, I know you guys oh, are loving the Wobbly Life it. section. Jesus told me, he said, you got to have a Wobbly Life section. That's what you need. You need to have your own what? Gunny's got the Gunny Corner. Mayo's got... Whatever. <laughs> the Apex Corner. You've got Wobbly Life. What has this fucking show turned <laughs> into, wobbly guys? Life. Tell me. Next week... <laughs> Ryan's cart racing. All Psych right, man. all right then. What time? What time is it now, Gunny? Uh, well, I need to, I need to take a vitamin here and get my beta carotene going. It's fucking news time, guys. That's what time it is. <laughs> news, news time. time. All right, Gunny. All right. I'm not sure what this article is. So you linked this article here. So maybe I'll just let you talk. I'll read the I'll read the headlines. So on, but it's pandemic a boon to Canadian TD banks global growth. Uh, the bank will use its popularity to help push women into more tech jobs. Um, okay. Good. Um, with more than eight million digitally active banking users in Canada, including six million active mobile users, TD is the most downloaded app in the country's. According to Global Finance, is this true, Ryan? You, you're our, our... Fuck yeah, buddy. Yeah, I mean, TD is a pretty big bank up here. Yeah, there's three or four of them. Um, well, basically, they are yeah, pushing um, to get women into more tech jobs, evidently, um, and using some of their money to do that. What was that, Kenny? No, I was just going to say, like, is it... Like, I'm just thinking of, like, a digital bank, or, I mean, is it something, Ryan, is this something you would, like, use to, is it almost like a PayPal thing, where, is it no, more... it's a bank. It's a bank. Link? It's like the Bank of America. It's like, it's a bank. It's a bank Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, but we don't have digital banks here. I mean, obviously, we have apps for banks, and I've digital. got one for my Redwood Credit Union, but... It's not, it's not digital. It's, it's an actual branch. You go in there, you go to the bank. Mm. They're just popular. TD. Their app and you're one of the big banks up yeah. here, right? Okay. TD and like Citibank or Bank of Montreal Park. and uh, CIBC and uh, Royal Bank. Lots of big Canadian bank companies. Nice. Gotcha. President's Choice. Move it yeah, on, We got it's just a normal bank, Gunny. Yeah. Okay. They're just putting money into uh, trying to get what more women in in tech. Yes, good for them. Yeah, yeah. no, that's yeah. great. I mean, awesome. 
long as they can get treated right over it, Activision Blizzard will be all right, right? <laughs> oh boy, we probably got stories on that. No, we've got stories on that later. Uh, moving on here, uh, a Twitch is facing an employee exodus amid a culture clash claims. Uh-oh. And reports over 360 employees have left in recent months with uh, reported failure to understand the community among chief concerns. Um, a new report has claimed that several top Twitch executives have left the company, apparently in part due to a failure to understand Twitch's culture. According to Bloomberg, uh, Amazon streaming platform has faced the exodus of executives since the start of 2022, the report claims that six top employees, including the chief operating officer, the chief content officer, and the head of creator development, have all left this year. On top of this, more than 300 other employees have left last year, and more than 60 more have already left in 2022. Um uh, Marcus Graham, the former head creator of development, told Bloomberg that he believes the issue is down to a failure of new executives to understand the Twitch community. Um, uh, It says, we went down the Silicon Valley route, hiring from Facebook, from Twitter. Uh, Graham says, claiming that many of the newer executives were unwilling to learn what this company was and why it's special. Another ex-Twitch employee told Bloomberg, the customer was the content creator. If you're not passionate about the product, you're not really looking at it from the customer's lens. And so you don't have the same level of empathy. So, so it sounds like basically, you know, we have a, a bunch of people leaving Twitch um, as they're trying to grow. You know, Twitch is like, I don't see Twitch ever going anywhere. You know, they, they still seem to be kind of like the, the dominant streaming platform. I know YouTube has made, pushes to do and, and, and bringing people over to YouTube, but they yes. also have their limitations. You know, um, you know, my son, I, I've watched it with my son. He watches a lot of Ludwig and Ludwig does a lot of interesting creative things, but sometimes he uses other content. Like he will go back and watch. Um, he does like a day of Reddit where he watches a whole bunch of Reddit videos and, you know, and that's like, try not to laugh things or, or he rates them and stuff like that. Some of that stuff can actually be copyrighted. So YouTube won't let him play it or, or, or different things. You know, he can't make references or he can't show like a video. Sometimes he will show a video and make comments on this video. And, and that's some of his entertainment that he does, but he's limited to what he can do on YouTube because hence copyright stuff, you know, so YouTube is way more aggressive than what Twitch is and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, in the same way with music, um, you know, you gotta be careful what, what music you have on there and and that's on both, you know, that's on Twitch and YouTube, but I just feel like, you know, Twitch really isn't going anywhere. It's not like, uh, Microsoft's, um, what was it called again? Um, I know Ryan, you really liked it. Oh my gosh. No, I forgot the name of their streaming platform. Yeah. Mixer. Yes. Um, you know, it's not like Mixer. I don't, I don't think Twitch is going anywhere. Um, I think they'll continue to work. Um, you know, they're uh, always, I probably say it's still the number one platform in my mind. I mean, probably YouTube is probably second behind it with their live gaming now. Um, yes. I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't watch much of the YouTube thing going on, but um, yeah, with Twitch, I mean, it's been around since you figure I started with, I guess you could say I started with YouTube videos mm-hmm. where it was, hey, guys, you know, like expect something very soon. And then 15 minutes later, you know, another, 45 minute or whatever it was, right. It was always so limited back in the day Um, for the next playthrough of, of gears of war two or whatever video game it was at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you got done finishing watching that, you know, he'd put the next one up. It was very, uh, it was old school. Right. But it was, that's the way it was, you know, taking a picture, a camera and pointing it at your TV and and doing it that way, you know, before the days of Elgato. Um, So you figure when Justin TV was a deal, a thing, you know, and and then boom, here comes Amazon. I mean, or excuse me, Twitch, you know, coming along going boom. You know, we want to make this the all into one platform, you know, and here it is. And it's been the dominant platform ever since. Um, yeah. And I've always, always enjoyed it. I, You know, I'll go back. I like the YouTube videos for, you know, kind of everything else. It could just be a funny ass cat video to 
a gaming video, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. They're both still, still great. Uh, I still, I still do you know, the competing platforms. I will, I will talk to people that aren't gamers and I will mention Twitch or something like that. And, and they can even like, like if the podcast or anything like that comes up, they, they associate it with Twitch automatically. Uh, just yeah. not being in the know. They're like, oh, you podcast. So you do video and this, this, and this. And, you know, and you, how many how many followers or streamers do you have or viewers do you have? I'm like, no. That's it's what a, at first it's, question It's I an get, audio, yeah. you know, it's an audio only. You get, it's downloads, not viewers. And um, and then you kind of explain it to them. And then the next question that comes out of the mouth is like, well, how can people sit and just watch people play video games? <laughs> like, I, I, I used can't to say explain the same it. thing. You like, know? like, you know, I used to hate it as a kid. Like, you take a two player Mario game when it wasn't your turn and you're just sitting there waiting for the other guy, you know, the guy playing Mario to die because you're playing Luigi. You punch him in the right arm and go, and motherfucker, give me the controller. Right. You, you mess him up. You accidentally block the TV or walk in front of him, you yeah. know, so he dies. You're like, oh, yes. look, it's my turn, you know? And, and now you get Twitch and you just like sit and watch. But I think some of it's just, you know, the people being entertaining, you know, and that's probably these big streamers. It's not just being good at games. It's a being a good entertainer as well. And I think being a good entertainer is more important. Definitely. I'm being well, good at games. Absolutely. That that, that's huge, right? That's, that's something that, you know, we've seen that with Ninja from the beginning of his career and, and kind of where he is now. Um, and I mean, obviously he's good at games. You have to be good at games, right? Like, you don't have to be a pro, but look at Dr. Disrespect. You know, like he's got his own persona and, you know, he's got his own thing going on where, you know, he's got his shtick, right? Where, uh, yeah, and he does it well, right? Yeah, but he, I hate, I hate yeah. that you use him as an example because he, I know, he just yeah. plays a dick. You know he what is. I mean? Like, yeah. That's, he that's says horrible character. things on Twitter. Like, I'm a dick. Look at yeah. me. I, you know, I really enjoyed. I was just, yeah, bad example. Um, but... This girl, uh, Elspeth. I don't oh know if yeah, you ever heard of her? I she, remember you. She was you... always super, super entertaining. Like whenever I watched her, I didn't even have to. I didn't even care what she was playing. It was more about like just listening to her goof off and be silly and have fun with her audience and whatnot. That's what you kind of went there for. You know what I mean? It was more that sort of entertainment more than what she was playing. But she would like play like Skyrim and she played all kinds of shit. I haven't watched her in a long time, actually. But um, she was always a fun person to watch. And that's the kind of people that like I would. I would like to watch on Twitch, you know, but I don't really use Twitch at all. I use YouTube more than Twitch. Personally, yeah, that's just the, um. I have ad free YouTube though, so that now do you watch a lot of like VODs on YouTube or are you watching like live people streaming live? Movies and TV I don't shows really watch people stream. I'm yeah, more watching so like more the VODs guides and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm not really into like interacting with streamers or anything like that. It's not yeah, well, especially like the big ones. You know you're pretty much not gonna get to interact with them. Actually, yeah. By the you time know. you type anything, they're not it's gonna scroll past before they even see it. I personally like if I, I like seeking a game out, it's like a game I really like. I like say Dead Cells. You know, and Dead Cells has new content out here. I'm slacking and have not played that yet. I need to get into that. What? Well, um, yeah, I, I got that, that on. I, uh, about this. I had some. You did DLC. hear about it, Gunny? I told you about it when I bought it. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if it was like <laughs> the last week or two or so. No, it's it's probably been a month. It was like a month ago or so, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I would try to find a streamer and then I'll like scroll toward the bottom of the screen streamers and the ones that have like maybe like eight or nine viewers. And I'll jump in those and try to interact with somebody in there, you know, and yeah. And try yeah. to talk to somebody in there because one, they appreciate the view. And two, they're more likely to see your con- your comments and, and be open and chat with you. You know, they're excited to have yeah. somebody on there chatting and and you know, they're like, Oh, I pulled in a random person, you know? <laughs> and they're they're excited by that and it makes their night sometimes and I just yep. like to do it, just kind of jump in and, and just, you know, talk to just a random person about a random game, you know, and be like, oh, you know, this, how is this? And, and stuff like that. And so and sometimes yeah. you can meet some interesting I, people. You know, as I think about this article more and more, when I think about Twitch and Amazon and, you know, owned, owned by this, this mega company where, you know, when uh, I'm just thinking here, Mayo, when Discord decides like, hey, we're going to have our own streaming platform thing going on and and just kind of shake things up, right? It's it it's almost like we need that, right? We need we need the new guy on the block to yeah. kind of come around and go, 
guess what we're doing over here with our streaming platform? Fuck you, Amazon. Right. And then it boom, you know, like I think it just kind of shakes up the industry. Right. Well, and it's, it's weird. a good thing. Others have tried, you know, you've had Mixer and you've had, you know, a couple other things that where YouTube has tried and they've gotten in and out of it, you know, like they, yeah, they, so they, you they tried to take the talent away from Twitch and it, yeah, yeah, they, or, yeah, you know? they tried and failed each time, but there's That's always going to be somebody out there, I, right? That, I really like Mixer. I like Mixer way better than I ever liked Twitch. I miss Mixer. But, it was, it was a good platform, but yeah, I was kind of like, wait, what's, what's happening? What are you doing, Phil? What's going on here? You know? I think it was Phil and Nadalia. The CEO was like, yeah, we're just ending that shit, you know? But maybe they saw the writing on the wall with the future of... They didn't. They, they couldn't break the market. They tried. And, yeah. they, and they, they couldn't take the numbers away from Twitch. Right. right. People were already used to going to Twitch. And it didn't matter if they took the talent or not. No one was leaving, you know? So the yeah. writing was on the wall. And then it was like, what do we do? Do we keep dumping money into this failing thing? Or do we go to this Game Pass route? You know what I mean? Oh, right. Yep. They dump their money in Game Pass instead and look at it. It's paying off for them. So, right. I'd almost like to see them bring it back and kind of piggyback it with Game Pass in a way of like, hey, look at these games. You can play on Game Pass. Watch your favorite streamers playing them, you know, kind of thing. But I don't you think, know, they I don't think they can do that on Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, I don't think it will either, but I, I would like to see it. You know, Steam does something like that. You know, Steam is know. very small. Yeah, but like if Steam you go to a it. game, most people don't like talk about it ever but if you click on buying a game it'll show some kind of streamer like at the top like you can watch somebody playing a live yeah. i never pay any attention to those but there's people yeah. that do it you know and and i could see something like that and xbox well, i was thinking need. more like if they did bring it back it would be more like what stadia was saying where they would use they would use mixer as like hey you want to Remember how Stadia was supposed to like, oh, you see a streamer playing a game and you want to play with them and you could just click yeah. on the link and you'd be get, Boom, get right into there. his game. Like I could see Mixer coming back and doing something like that kind of a style of thing where with, with xCloud, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you can just jump into the games and blah, 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 and play with your stream, your favorite streamers. And right. But does that even take off? You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, uh, and I think that's Microsoft's major worry with it when they shut it down was, it was like, we've tried to do everything we can and there's no point anymore in, in trying to push this any further, you know? So, yeah, I just think it'd be neat in game pass. If you could have a video like that, instead of like the video of the, you know, like the trailer or whatever, like yeah. if you had a live streamer, like on steam, and you can see the game being played in action. You may, you, you may be more inclined to, to pick it up and download it and try it, you know, because oh, you, mean, you mean using that to, to like advertise for the games in a way. Yeah. Like you would have to have a bunch of streamers, but you Remember know, they used to do that with mixer when you, when you went into the Xbox store, you could scroll remember. down and you would see the people that were streaming. I think so. Maybe that game at that point in time, because you know, that would be something, you know, like no, nobody saves the world. You know, that game, I think, is passed up a lot by the yeah. by the album art and all that stuff. But if somebody clicks on it or whatever and sees somebody playing it, it may attract them to it, you know, because like, oh, this game actually looks kind of neat once you see yeah. somebody playing it. Instead of these still shots, the still shots don't do any kind of justice. And even maybe the trailer might not, you know. And I feel like maybe watching somebody stream it or somebody having a really yeah, good time playing You get to actually see how the game plays. Like, oh, yeah. okay, this is what this game is about, you know, and you may entice more people to it because... Game Pass, you know, as good as it is, I I feel like the one thing that kind of hurts it is all the choice that's in there. You know what I mean? Like, I can sit there and go through Game Pass and be like, oh, this is a really good game. That's it. I really wanted to play that game. And then I still don't ever, I download it, and I don't ever come back to it. I, I yeah. jump on something else. And then I jump on something else. Because I know it's there, and I know I can jump on it at any time. Like, oh, I'm going to jump on this game later. Where if it was on Steam or something like that, and it was like, say, $2 to buy the game, I would buy it and I would definitely play it. You know, but if it's on Game Pass, I just know. Would you, it, though? I think I would. Would you, though? I, most of the time, I would download something right away on Steam and start it right away. But for some reason on my Xbox, I don't know if it's because for me, my Xbox downloads slow. Um I don't know why it does on my PC. The Xbox app does. And my Xbox in the house downloads slow as well. And compared to like steam and stuff. And so like I find myself installing a game and just walking away and coming back way later, you know, like, Oh, it might be done by now, you know, kind of thing. 
or Steam, you know, five to ten minutes max, something, you know, maybe a hundred gig game would be downloaded already. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I would be more inclined, you know, to jump into something, you know, if there wasn't so many options. It's great that there's options, but sometimes I feel like it takes away. You know, like if I didn't have as many options, yeah, maybe no, I, I know would. What you mean. You get a bit, a bit of like game pi- game pass itis. Yeah, J- just cause four game. I kept thinking I wanted to play. I saw that come to Game Pass. I was super excited to play that on PC to see how never it would look and never but touched it. Well, that's the thing about you know Microsoft's sort of strategy with their with their third party stuff coming to Game Pass, right? Is that because I was thinking the same thing where oh, it needs to be bought on the xbox platform right but no their whole thing is that they've been touting and i know ryan has said this before a couple times is that uh and i've seen developers talk about it too where they're like no we see sales grow so much more on other platforms like whether it's a uplay store a steam store um yeah in in other places other than you know the plastic box right that's the thing that they're getting the more eyes on it, right? So, right. so it works, you're probably it that works perfect almost, example, Mayo. It works where, almost as like a demo for a game. You it know does. what I yeah. mean? Like the way demos used to, but you get the full game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then so if, you may not be buying it on Xbox, game pass, you might buy it on or, PlayStation, but still, if it leaves you're Game Pass it. or it, you know, it, you get a discount on it. You know, you still get, you can still purchase that game for, for a discount, you right. know. When when it's gonna leave, you can always remember. Hey, fuck, get twenty percent off or whatever. Yeah, I get twenty percent just... off with code HGP twenty. Manscaped.com. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's probably my only thing I feel like it's negative about Game Pass is is so much option. Sometimes I will neglect games I wanted to play. Yeah, or I had no, a I little bit a little bit of interest, but this other game really piqued my interest right now. I'm yeah. gonna come back to that other one later, and I never do. You know, because you always want to play the shiny new. You never want to yeah, play yeah. the old. Yeah. Right. But uh, anyways, moving on. Um, so some nice bit of news here. Uh, Eleven Bit Studios donates 850k to the Ukraine. Um, it says in case you've missed the global headlines, Russia recently started an unprovoked invasion in Ukraine. And it's because it caused a lot of video game companies to show support for Ukraine, either by taking Russian teams out of their games, as in EA and FIFA, or by giving money and organizations that help the Ukraine, as in this case, CD Projekt Red and the Pokemon company, 11-Bit Studios, the Poland-based developers of the anti-war game uh, This War of Mine and Frostpunk, were some of the first studios to step forward on the matter. Last week, 11-Bit Studios announced that all the profits made from the profits of this war mine and its DLCs were also given heavy price cuts would go directly to the Ukraine Red Cross. Fuck yeah, good for them. Hell yeah, yes. that's awesome. Um, on March 1st, nearly a week later, the team has made the following uh, upstatement that they will be donating $715,000 to the Ukraine Red Cross, a massive amount of money that was raised in the last week, alone by sales of this war of mine. However, in one week window closed today, as of March 3rd, 11-Bit Studios has decided to extend it until tomorrow, giving players time to get involved. I'm not sure when this um, article was released, so I'm assuming this is probably over. Um, it did say uh, an update down here. It says, they raised eight hundred and fifty thousand to donate to the UK Red Cross. So awesome, and and you see a lot of that. We're seeing. Um, uh, we posted some of that stuff in Discord. I didn't put all that in the news because there's so many different ones doing it. You know, EA has pulled. Um, I think the Russian teams out of FIFA. Um, you see a lot. Who was it? CD Projekt Red and and a bunch of them not selling games. You know, GOG, uh, the the store for buying games, good old games. They are not selling games in Russia. Um, Netflix. A lot of them are, yeah, Netflix. Yeah, there's is just so many. Service. And some people are like, oh, well, what's that going to do? You know, that doesn't. Um, I mean, it just shows support and the solidarity more uh, yeah. than anything. I mean, but, but the thing is, is like kind of what I was saying last week about how it's you're hurting all the little people. Right. You know what I mean? You're hurting the little people that can't afford to get around this. 
right you know or you know you know the 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 rich billionaires that are the ones that are pushing the whole problem are the ones that'll have like a VPN that they can get around it and watch Netflix if they want to. It's not that big of a deal, you know, to them. And I think it's just more of a statement. Part of, that's part of the problem, right? You like know, you're just hurting and... civilization in general. But like you said, they're standing for something. They're trying to prove a point. And, and hopefully you, 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 you get those people so angry that they start to fight their own government. You know yes. what I mean? Like, it just sucks that it's really going to hurt a lot of people. Like not, not so much the Netflix thing more, you know, a lot of, a lot of other things that are going on that are really going to hurt them a lot. But it's you know, yeah, economy I like is just going to be destroyed in this situation with like 11 bit studio where they're, they're actually donating money. You know, they, they took, yeah. instead of we're not going to sell our games in Russia, we're, we're going to take our profits and help Ukraine with that. Yeah. You know, and not like necessarily they need that, fight right the war. They're, they're helping the people there, you know, they're with the Red Cross. You know, they're not necessarily funding the fighting or nothing like that. They're, they're funding the the recovery of people and the recovery. Yeah. The, and, the, probably, the healing and probably and, getting people, getting citizens out of the Ukraine, I right. would assume. And so that money would go that's to. that's probably a bigger help. I would like to see more, co- you know, companies do that if they want to take a stance, you know, yeah. like, hey, let's donate some money to the Red Cross I over there and getting people. Disney out of there. and. And uh, someone else, too, said that they were stopping their services and they're not releasing any of their movie releases out there. And yeah, it's it's it just seems like every time I turn around and, and, you know, I'm popping on Twitter. It just seems, you know, the list of companies is just astonishing that are stop, you know, that are stopped to do stopping business with Russia. Right. It's just. Yeah, I mean, the list grows. I don't think we can even list them here, even here on the show. You know, the number of companies that are no longer doing business with Russia. Um, it's amazing. And um, yeah, it, yeah, I can't, I can't even fathom it. But, um, you know, because of the, you know, what Putin is doing to Ukraine is just awful. But um yeah, so kudos to everybody out there and, and you know, everybody's donating to Red Cross and helping the Ukrainians out, man. It's great. Definitely. So. What else All we right. got, Mayo? All right, moving on. Uh, Epic Games acquires Bandcamp. It says, we're living in a year of acquisitions. Microsoft is in the process of buying Activision Blizzard. Sony scooped up Bungie. Take two acquired, was it Zigna? Is that how you pronounce it? Zynga. Zynga. And now Epic's game has Purchased Bandcamp. You know that it's, one time at Bandcamp? Right, there you go. It says, yes, the music storefront streaming platform is now under the umbrella of the maker of Fortnite and the Unreal Engine. It says, why? Anyone's guess? Uh, the move doesn't really harden the publisher's uh, purchase of Rock Band or Fuse Development Harmonix. Uh, last November with the uh, Nintendo creating more music-infused content for Fortnite, but it does yeah, feel I like think... that Bandcamp will figure into these play and these plans in an obvious way. The stranger things have happened. Yeah, I, I feel like they've been making a lot of musical moves lately. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I think that they have something up their sleeves. Um, and didn't this. Brian didn't Bandcamp recently within the last six months acquire Harmonix or am I wrong? No, Epic Epic bought Harmonix. Oh, so they okay. So now they have Bandcamp as well. Just recently, All yeah. Right. And and a lot of their moves have been like musically oriented recently. Even like the Fortnite doing doing the concerts in Fortnite and stuff. And it seemed like didn't yeah. they buy something else too that was. I can't remember. There's something a little while ago. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but it is weird, though, right? You think about it, something more music based. But uh, you know the uh, the CEO of Bandcamp over there, he he is saying that he's promising things will essentially remain the same over Bandcamp, and that Epic will help expand Bandcamp's features and availability while allowing them to continue proper compensation to the music artists. Many of whom are independent. So yeah, basically, and that's what Bandcamp funding. is. You if know, you don't know, yeah, Bandcamp is somewhere where hey, we could make music, 
we could all start a band and make music and we could publish our music to Bandcamp and people could buy it and purchase it from there. And Bandcamp doesn't really take a super cut of, of the purchases. I think it's a very small amount that Bandcamp actually takes and the artist gets most of the money for whatever they sell. I want to yeah. see if it was around the same percent that the Epic Store takes. I remember thinking that was kind of ironic. or something? It was like 12 yeah. or 15%. Yeah. So, well, because that kind of jumped out of my mind. I was like, oh, that's kind of ironic that they kind of take about the same kind of percentage. Yeah, you know? same cut. <laughs> yeah. But, but oh. yeah, so it's getting an Hopefully interesting move. It's the same because kind of out of left field. But I think people make more out of some of these acquisitions than what, you know, they are. You know, this is probably just yeah. epic. Maybe they have something planned. Maybe they're just back in this company you know it's yeah who knows it, it could be it could be something minor well you know? i mean it could be it could be something as easy as hey we want to put more music in fortnite but maybe we'll maybe we'll find all these indie bands you know because we own this band camp thing and we can you know support these indie groups and and make more money and you know help them out you know i don't know Bringing music into Fortnite, yeah. In, well, that's the thing. Indie. They were the first to bring concerts really into Fortnite. You know, they were bringing well, those big concerts, and I, they I weren't heard, the first, but they were the ones that made it popular. And, and like, like uh, I think it was on some premium content on VGO. They they talk about the metaverse and and kind of how that was a good example of like bringing people in for a concert. You know, in in the game, and it's kind of like their mm-hmm. own version of their little metaverse and maybe their maybe own metaverse, some, yeah. Maybe they have something planned like that, you know, maybe some music related stuff. I, I don't know. But um it's just it's just interesting to hear, you know, this is like they said the 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 time of acquisitions and you know, taking people buying over you know, other companies and smaller companies are either investing in them or or planning on doing something with them, but we'll find out, you know, time will tell. Um moving yeah. on. Uh the new Steam Deck orders will not ship until at least October. Um, so yeah, if you have yeah, not yeah. pre-ordered a Steam Deck already and you are a new order of a Steam Deck, you're looking at probably October before you'll get one shipped. Um, I did think it was kind of interesting, not not necessarily talking about not getting one until October. Did you see any of the footage where, where Gabe was actually hand-delivering some? Um No. Yeah. It's. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. It, it was actually yeah. kind of funny yeah, because I, think I heard about it, but I haven't seen Gabe, it. Gabe. Gabe is not a small guy, right? And he has this no. like beard, and he has this face mask on that just kind of covers this little corner of his beard, right? And he was he was hand delivering these out of an like an Amazon truck or like a UPS truck or something like that. Mm. And some of the people were like right away would recognize. They're like, "Hey, you're Gabe," and and he had signed them. You know, like, you know, he had autographed him and everything. And like one, he's like, he's like, oh, I hope you don't mind that I signed it. And the person was kind of like, uh, they didn't really realize who Gabe, Gabe was, you know, he's like the president of steam, you know? And then the other ones are like, right away, they're like, oh yeah, you're Gabe. Uh, This is really cool. But they weren't like super excited. And then other ones, like he would go to the door, people would be like, okay, thank you. And Gabe would just kind of stand there. And they were like, do you need anything else more? (laughs) And He'd be like, yeah, I'm Gabe, you know, I'm like the president of Steam kind of thing, you know, and they're like, oh, what would you do, gosh. Mayo? What would you do? Would you just like, would you just like scream like a schoolgirl? No. If Gabe showed up here. I, I think it would be cool. I mean, I wouldn't scream like a little schoolgirl. I, I don't get excited like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but. they be like, oh be. my God, it's Gabe Neal. My fucking God is here. In all, in all honesty, if it looked like it was like a hot day wherever he was doing that. Yeah. He looked like you were sweating a little bit. I'd probably offer him a drink, offer him inside. Okay. We're Can you wipe chats, him down you know? from the sweat? Yeah, no, he would. Be like, yeah. hey, why don't you why don't you come in and show me this how this Steam Deck thing works? Right. Sit and on my couch you, here. He'd tell you how to, to download wind. their new game. <laughs> he'd be like, download the new game. But um, it's, it was just a my video. Wi-Fi. Just just showing kind of a little bit that they are doing a little bit of a personal touch, and that you kind of hear his voice cracking a little bit when he talks to people. Like he actually, I think he has some passion in this project. Like I really do feel like he wants to put a stamp on it and he actually really is proud of this product actually and like he's pretty proud to be giving them them steam decks to the people so yeah, it could be a whole dress up Santa Claus this CEO year going to people's houses right you know, delivering and, his and product. sure 
a lot of it's publicity. You know, he did it yeah. for publicity as well. But it's just neat to see because, like I said, you can you can kind of hear it in his voice. Like he was pretty sincere and 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 giving it to those people. And like I said, sometimes he would kind of stand around and be like, "Hey, yeah, I'm Gabe," you know. <laughs> but uh, but other times people would recognize him and they would be super excited. And he would you could tell he's kind of humbled in a way by that as well. Yeah. So well, he's just, been stuck kind of in. Reason. In New Zealand for the last three years in isolation, you know, was like Ryan. It 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 must feel good to see people excited for your product, right? You know what I mean, and to see it, you know, right in front of you, you know, where they get it and they're like, oh, finally it's here. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I can't wait. And then realizing that who that is and being like, what? Right. (laughs) Especially you, you you probably wouldn't even think about it right away. You know, you're like. Yeah, who is this guy? And it's, sometimes it's people were some delivery guy with a beard, right? Especially were, when you if he's wearing a mask. And they gave some kind of excuse why there was cameras. I can't remember what it was because some people were like, "Why are there cameras?" You know, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm Gabe." I didn't even think about that. But uh, yeah, but funny. yeah, it, it, there's a YouTube video out there. I watch it. It's not real long, but it was kind of neat. Like it's it was actually kind of you know you could like I said you could tell the pride in it. Like he had some you know investment yeah. into it more than just making money like you really kind of could see it so you know so what tier is this man what is this like is this like the first tier kind of wave of deliveries and then yeah it was I the mean, first so many steam decks not yeah it was like ordered. so many of them they were in i think it was the seattle area i think is where he was delivering them and so he just i don't know if he's and i don't know where they're based out of of their where their main places here in the u.s i don't it know is. Is it Minnesota? I, I know. I can't but, uh, remember now. I, I think it was the Seattle area from where I took from the video. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it just, I think it was just random. I think he just randomly, like some lucky people that got their hands on one early, he just randomly in that area was delivering and, you know, in this little Amazon truck and just showing going. up, throw your fucking switch away. Take this Steam Deck right here, pal. This thing works. Right. And uh, I did play, see, can't I did play see uh, Destiny that, 2 on it, but everything else you can. Good luck. I think it's a little soon, but I did see some articles talking about how they're already working on a Steam Deck 2. Um, you know, I don't know if that's the greatest news to be putting out there. Uh, you know, because you're like, oh, I just bought the Steam Deck 1. And they're already working on right. a 2, you know? But, well, if you think about it, they all, every company does that. As soon but as you you're release talking, a product, yeah. you're kind of working on the next one. I'm sure they are. What you're I mean, gonna do. It's you the know same way I mean? with games. You know, as soon as they release a game, they're already on to the next project. You know, before we yeah. know it. Um, but I think they just kind of announced it out there. They're like, "Oh, look, we're working on a second on a version two, You know, um, got to boost stock, right? I even saw like the PS5 Slim. I don't know. Is that part of a news article that we have, or but it even looked like an Xbox. Uh, one s or whatever you know just had that look to it but mm. either way i don't know where i saw it could have been fake fake news there's no place in five slim Come out. <laughs> uh, in other news gunny some of you wait, guys wait oh okay what's what's wa washington yeah yes so seattle right yeah, yeah. bell bellevue washington's where steam headquarters is ah uh, that makes sense then, yeah. Interesting. Sorry. Yeah. Like yeah I, Microsoft you, you mentioned though, that right? and I was like, it, it was killing me. Redmond like, or... I really don't know <laughs> yeah, where their headquarters is. I didn't, I didn't is. either. Like, I know Microsoft. I know Sony. You know what I mean? Like, I know all, like, all, and it's like, I don't know what the head office of Steam is. There you go. Bellevue, Washington. Awesome. I'm moving on, you know, Ryan, have you ever on a mysterious inaccessible Elden Ring building it's explored in and out of bounds video I guess I haven't please tell me more Um, the Elden Ring map has countless points of interest which most rewards players with an item a boss fight or something more surprising Uh, but there's one large structure in the northeast of the game's starting area Limgrave uh, that seems completely inaccessible this is if you've seen it, you've probably spent about half an hour unsuccessfully trying to get inside. Uh, the building in question is a huge uh, coliseum like building with ghostly fellow mopping around out front. Uh, it says I wanted because all I wanted to was was fight these ghostly fellows, and um, 
It says you can interact with him, and it says to fight as a warrior at last. So why? Why, oh, guidance of grace, will this door not open? Well, I said, here's a theory. I said, the theory is it's a Coliseum for a forthcoming PvP-oriented DLC. Uh, a couple of people, um, thanks to famed Soulsborn data miner Lance McDonald, we now have footage of the inside of the building. It is a current build in Elden Ring. And while it's clearly unfinished, there's enough there to pretty much confirm it's a fighting arena, which obviously it's a Coliseum. What else would it be, right? Um, and That's the what it looks like. NPC's dialogue also strengthens that theory. And then there's a, a link to a video, some footage. This is on YouTube. Um, it says uh, it wouldn't be unprecedented for this to be a post launch PvP area. All three Dark Souls games have purpose built areas for online scraps in the months after launch. So it sounds like you guys are eventually going to have access to a PvP arena. And not only that, but I can definitely see where you can just drop in a boss, right? Drop in any boss and go at it, right? So whether it's whether it's PvE or PvP, yeah. But that could be a thing for sure. Um, man, I think what would be really cool, instead of just having this like, because I'm just thinking like, oh, like almost got one-on-one or, you know, or you and a friend taking on a boss, but just, Fucking just have at it, right? Just, you know, you and f four friends on a boss or just you versus one boss. And yeah, the possibilities are endless with this arena. Definitely from software. I think they're going to do it this time. But yeah, I think it'll be different coliseums and, you know, but that, yeah. But I think that that area in the map is where it's going to happen at. So you could just, you just fast travel there and. Go uh, fight some bosses and fight some real players, which you can do in this game. Uh, other people can just join your game randomly and fuck you up, kill you. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Just like bears falling from the sky, right, Ryan? <laughs> you might <laughs> as well have bear, a, a player activate, drop in and kill you, right? Attacks. So. All right, moving on. Last last big news I got here is uh, Assassin's Creed Bahala, Dawn of Ragnarok. Everything you need to know. Uh, the latest from Ubisoft, Dawn of Ragnarok, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla's third major piece of story DLC. However, unlike uh, this, the Sage of Paris or the Wrath of Druids, uh, this features a longer story and new gameplay mechanics. And uh, it continues on to say, it says, here's everything you need to know about the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dawn of Ragnarok. Um, I'm trying to think here. I don't see a whole lot more on this link gunny okay i wasn't sure if it was the same thing but it just talks about that 35 hour adventure yeah kind of kind of common for a game add-on of this scope because if you look at that map i just i'm just trying to think back to that map being not humongous like a regular assassin's creed game um but i don't I remember mean, how still big a that good map game was. overall I thought, I thought it was decent size i, I don't yeah. remember but but I mean, there's just a lot of emptiness and mountainous range in it, um, but still enough to do, right? But one of my favorite things in that game still was. But I like the fact that boat and yeah. you were sailing, and they would start singing and chanting or whatever it was. Yeah, I always thought that was kind of neat. That's a nice little touch in that game. But that's cool. We don't have to pay another seventy dollars for a new game called Dawn of War Ragnarok, right? So we can just, depending on how much this add-on is going to be, we can just add it to our existing game. Yeah, which will be cool. Or you can get you play plus probably, and it'll probably be included. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, I don't remember if their DLCs are included in you play plus or not, but I think you get like the ultimate versions of the games, and so I would assume. Yeah, and it even talks about that, you know, a temporary power and equipment boost. So, yeah, that's that's something that people that are. When this comes into new fresh eyes and they see this game, they're going to be like, well, I'm not level 30, 40. What am I going to do? Right. It'll be like a destiny type situation where, yeah, you could just auto level up and go have fun. Because that's kind of the way those games are set up anyway, with Assassin's Creed, where you can cross over on the other side of the tree and it's a fucking level 12 owl that's going to fucking just 
fly by you and clip you on the right side of your body and you're going to die. You know, you're like, what the hell? I got one shot by an owl. I'm like, oh, because I was in the the level 30 to 35 section instead of the 10 to 15 section. Right. Right. <laughs> but that's just how these games are set up. Definitely. Got to get good first. Right. And grind in the level 10 to 15 section. But uh, that's that's all the news I got. Um, you know, everything else is kind of kind of quiet right now. It's still a lot of war news. You know, a lot of the fight for Ukraine over there, and and you know the the push against one side or the other. You know, like pretty much every kind of you know drop. Yeah, it was we were saying you know not supporting sales in Russia, basically. You know, so yeah, it was a lot of that. A lot of that news was that. So, but, uh, so all right. a lot of companies. Um, they didn't want to include it all. So there was, it was a long list of laundry list of things not even in the regular media, but in the gaming news. So a hey, gunny. Yes. Why don't you go get in that corner? Oh, fine. I'll just head on over there, guys. Just go over here and walk over into my corner here. What do we got for the get console in that corner. corner? Yeah. Okay. There what do go. we got for March 20? Well, look what I put in here. March 2021. 2021. I think I'm going back in time, man. <laughs> uh, so what do we got for our free PlayStation Plus game for March of 2022? We've got Ark Survival Evolved. Oh, it's in uh, Game Pass. Yeah, play that over there. Or play it on Sony. Uh, Team Sonic Racing, is that in Game Pass? But, but either way, that's a fucking good game right there. And the game is fun. And for you PS5 owners, you're going to get those two plus Ghost Runner. The PS5 Game version. Pass. <laughs> yeah. What's Ghost Runner? Is that the... Uh, that was the like that Mirror's Edge kind of... Did anybody ever buy game? that? I mean, that's kind of a niche game almost, but... Yeah, I wouldn't want to play it anyways. Personally. What yeah, else do they I get? S- you get something else too, those Sony guys. Oh yeah, they get that standalone version, multiplayer version of Ghosts of Tsushima. Ah, the multiplayer. Yeah. So that's a good one. I could definitely see that. You know, if they really want to push that, make that a free to play. That Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer. Yeah. And expand on it, you know, see what they could do with it. That's kind of what they're doing here, right? Yeah, I could definitely see Just somebody. Could, I was asking a friend. I said, hey, do you got you got the Sony Plus or whatever? Because he just buys any brand new game that comes out on, you know, the PS5. So. He's like, he's like, he's like, oh, I don't think so. But I'm like, dude, you got to get, he was playing Gran Turismo. And I'm like, dude, you got to get that Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer going. Uh, It's like the one game he probably didn't buy on PS5. But um, moving over to the Xbox section here for games with gold. Uh, I think we're still kind of early on in the beginning of the month. So you get the flame and the flood. And your second gamer is Sacred 2 Fallen Angel. So go get those two games. Uh, Usually I have that Xbox Game Pass corner. Uh, I didn't bring anything up here. uh, So I'm just going to kind of do this here on the fly. But anything that sticks out for you right on Game Pass over on the console side of things? Take a look. So I'll look here on the PC side. Take a look and see, Gunny. I will just have a look. What is new in Game Pass? We got, uh, let's see. I'm oh. on the PC. We got Two Point Campus is coming soon. That's a way away. Whoa. You've got Far Changing Tides. So that this was is the, the game Windows. I was trying to think of. Yeah. So I played that first one. I, I think I briefly spoke about it when it first came out. And I literally, you could finish that game in probably an hour. It was one of those you can't lose at this kind of game, right? So it was perfect for me for baby mode. Um, it was more more puzzle based. And gosh, it was, you know, it's a side scrolling thing where you're driving this almost like steamboat sort of thing across an ocean. And there's just not much to it as far as even story or whatever. But visually, it was appealing. Um, you know, like fires may start in the engine compartment. You just got to go put the fires out. And I think the whole premise behind that that game was at the time was, yeah, you can just let the fires keep burning. It's not it's not going to blow up or whatever. Right. But you're 
your boat's not going to keep moving, right? So you got to figure out how to get the boat to, you know, get to the other side of the ocean here. So uh, it was just little things like that. So yeah, I'm just, I've got to download. I got to play it. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's as good as the first one. Might be the same thing. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, Alice, Alice Madness Returns. So that's also on PC. We'll and say I, that game is cool, but it's really hard. Yeah, that's the a tough platforming game. Platforming to is 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 really really hard, <laughs> really really hard. But it's a fun. It's a interesting world that you go through. It's very yeah. Creepy. I want to see. And then Definitely. the other game is a uh, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. Hmm. Interesting. So that is 21 gigs. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it says so it says here direct end users run June 2010. So is this just something that just came to Xbox? Which uh, yeah. Final Fantasy Lightning Returns? I mean, it's not a new game, right? No, 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 no. It's an old game. Been on Xbox for a, okay. for a while. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah, Dragonfall by Dragon. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is on there. I think we talked about that before. And uh, Epic. Um, speaking of that, folks, I never got the free game, so I failed over here on my console corner here because oh, I need Johnny. to play my Epic game. <laughs> Johnny, I know, right? I was looking at the list and everything, and I'm like, everything's up to date. We're good. The wobbly what? life corner is going to take over, buddy. I know. You know what? While we're doing that, why don't we just... Uh... No, I got it here, guys. I got it. What do we got in the store? What's going on? Uh, let's see who we got. Uh, Kenya. No, games on sale. Oh, we got some free shit. Holy shit, we got three free games here. On Epic, you've got Black Widow Recharged, Centipede Recharged, and there's a Dauntless Epic Slayer Kit. So if you guys are into the the Dauntless games, I think there's also some shit you can get on uh, Game Pass as well for Dauntless. So they're really doing a big push for this. This, you know, this. Uh, what is it? Monster Hunter fucking knockoff game. You know, it's kind of just available everywhere. So and then you got City Skylines coming up. So that'll be available probably by the time in a couple of days after you hear this. Get that City Skylines. I. I put so many fucking hours into that game. It's not even funny, folks. Not. <laughs> it's not even funny. You have like what, like eight or nine hundred hours in that game? I don't know. It's insane, right? So, yeah, That's I've only got. I know I've only got six hundred hours into uh, Satisfactory. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of staring at the title screen, Gunny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Satisfactory is a little bit different for me, right? Where that thing can be crafting overnight. Uh, some things fill up and some things will just keep going and going. Um, but yeah, that's my, that definitely feeds my, my need for crafting games over there. So, uh, but let's move on over to the questions we've got here from uh, on Facebook. And you can also ask us those on discord as well and Twitter. But um, first one comes from Brian Tilp Jr. And he asked if you were going through a gaming drought, and thought if this game came out today, it would get me off the couch to go buy it and play it day one. No questions asked. Hmm. Oh, is there any game out there, guys, that you would just like, you'd have to like, and like he said, let's, let's just say it's a physical copy, right? Where you have to go get the game first. Well, I, I think for me, like with as much people talk about it, it'd be Elden Ring. Like if you like in Jesus' shoes where you just can't really find it something you want to play. I just yeah. feel like that game can have that little bit of mix of just kick back and explore, or you can do the drive of, you know, like Ryan said, you know, just try to grind out and beat a boss, or you can, you know, just continue to explore like that. Just that open world game is kind of intriguing to me. Like that would probably get me back. If I was on a drought, it'd probably get me back into wanting to play something. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I can't think of anything offhand, but man, there's so many, you know, I feel like my gaming needs are pretty much being met, you know, like as far as currently with 
you know, all the shit that's been coming out. But, um, damn, you know, I would like, I mean, I know the Gran Turismo 7 is out. Um, and, man, I'm just thinking, like, maybe, let's just say there's four to eight comes out, right? And I know those games are not, they don't really come with, like, super licensed music or, but they do come with cool ass cars, right? And I really like that, that kind of that seven on the PC where, yeah, I'm going to get this. It's going to be day one game pass. Right. And I don't know. I just can't wait to get on there and, and play that, that four to eight. Right. Yeah. That's just going to be so good. I feel that's going to be a game. Let's just say it's like, it seems not coming out digitally. You got to go to GameStop to get it or target. I'd go pick that shit up day one, you know? So even though I'm not, I haven't been too much into the racer games of, you know, the F1 formula series or I haven't even played the new grid yet. So that game's downloaded. It's been taking a game off the time off the grid and racing games. Anything for you, Ryan, that you would just have to get day one? Anything for me that I would have to get day one? Yeah, like Coming let's up? say you had to go to EB Games or whatever. What do you mean? Like now? Yeah, like right now. Like, let's just say that it was one of your favorite games and now there's a re reboot, right? And or if you're in a drought, you know, you're a gaming you drought, is there something that... Yeah, you can't buy you? it digitally day one. What you would know? I buy if I was in a drought? I don't know. I'm in a, I'm in a bit of a drought right now, <laughs> to be honest. Elden Ring's been the thing that's pulled me out. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, that's got... I don't know who admit, makes that's it. That's one of the games. But whoever makes Wobbly Life needs to make a Wobbly Life too. <laughs> he's would already you? he's already going to withdrawals. Yeah, that would he, be he, it. He's already sad. He beat the game. He thinks Rubber he's out band of things. games. He is out of things to do. He needs some intervention over here. He needs a Wobbly Life too. I, there I, it I is, Brian. It. Wobbly Life. You got to get that wobbly, shit. Wobbly Life. Check it out. So before we know it, I think I think Brian's going to already have this game on PC. It's going to be modded with weapons and drugs. And yeah, there's going to be some, he's going to add like some brothels to the fucking game. He's going to ruin it. <laughs> That's GTA, man. All right. Uh, I want to know if we, uh, have we ever watched, Brian wants to know if we ever watched the Cuphead show. Yes, I did watch that first season and it's very good. I was going to ask how it was. I, I started to watch the first episode and I just yeah. really didn't get into it. I was kind of like, but I didn't give it any time. I gave it a couple of minutes. I'm like, I'm just not in the mood right now. Like, I don't feel like watching it right now. So maybe, maybe I'll dip back into it and, and, and maybe hopefully it's good. Um, I, just, I, I talked about it last time I was on. What didn't I? I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't like it that much. It was yeah. okay. I mean, the, the art style looked pretty cool, but I just was yeah. like, uh, I don't know if I really want to let it. Maybe I had to be in the mood for it. I don't know. But I just, to me, uh, it was a quick no after about maybe five minutes in or something like that. But again, like I said, maybe maybe I just wasn't in the mood to watch, you know, that kind of movie, that show. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and give it another shot and see what happens. Um, I always have some time I can turn on TV in the background or whatever and try to pay some attention to it, you know. But I usually don't watch a lot of TV. But being video game related, I may may try to give it a shot. What else we got over Gunny? Uh, Brian wants to know if we're ready for that, the Halo show. Yeah, the Halo TV show. Uh, yeah, I'm that. I don't know. It looks cool. It looks all yeah. right. We'll see what happens. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I love my I love my sci-fi and TV shows, but I'll, I'll definitely. I already have. I use I use uh. Damn, now what the hell is it? I almost said Netflix, but it's called Movie Box or whatever. So a lot of times it may not be that that day one sort of thing, but it each episode comes out, you know, like the following day or whatever. So I'll already have it, man. I'll have it in 4K and be able to watch that shit. So, yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out. So and uh, yeah, I was reading some articles like over the last couple of days about, oh, there's like another lead that that left uh, 
343 Studios and I'm like people are leaving studios all the time but it's just it's just funny that people just want to hate but you know I don't sit there and say oh Sony Santa Monica lost the guy that pours the coffee you know what I mean like gosh it's just so much of that right that back and forth stuff you know it's just so silly right uh it just drives me insane but that game is going down the tubes now they don't give out free Red Bull in the office you know <laughs> all right whatever so just give me a good fucking game that's all i care about i don't care if phil spencer is eating a sandwich i really don't don't want to see that on twitter i care less give me a good gameplay a good game to play right guys right that's right so, yeah but that's all we have oh anything else no i think that's all we have that last for question no uh, he questions. had uh, he also wanted to ask what what game needs a show Oh, yeah, I saw was it I did see some articles on God of War Ragnarok, right? Was it? And I think we had already that was more speculation. And but now it's 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 coming out to be something more. And but is there anything else besides that, guys? What game Uh, needs to show? First thing that jumps in my mind and no surprise is Apex might have an interesting show that they can they've done it with yes. Dota. They have if you go to their YouTube channel, they have these animated videos that, that kind of tell a story, you know, and and their seasons are telling little stories about this and that part. And uh they have these animated shorts and they're actually really done well and they're 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 a couple minutes long, but they're they're pretty neat. Like I watched I haven't watched them all in order or nothing like that. I just I've only seen a couple of them, but but they were really well put together. I, I really actually enjoyed the ones I did watch. And it seemed like they've done a nice job with them. So I think they could make some kind of neat story with Apex and those characters. But again, it it had to be like it's like a one time series, you know, like one season or something like that, because it'd be hard to keep going on with some kind of plot in that game. Yeah. And I know Arcane, even my son, my son asked me today, like, did you watch Arcane yet? I'm like, dude, I told you about that show like a month ago, but right. I, I mean, I haven't watched it. I've just seen the trailer a couple of times and I hear that one's just ex- done extremely well. Yeah. So I, that's I League of Legends. And even if you're not into League of Legends, it's definitely worth, worth a watch. So I think you and run. I, or they took their time with that. I want them to make a wobbly life show. <laughs> you with your <laughs> fucking wobbly life. God damn it. All right. Fuck. Can you guys Shit, see I want, in the notes? I want a Forza 8 show. I want car number one to race <laughs> car number two. It's going to be one Lamborghini race in a Porsche. I don't know. I, I, need to, I need to get my practice in going. I was, like I was telling you before the show, uh, I got invited to go down to run a thing in Ohio called the Triple Nickel with a Camaro and uh, a bunch of car guys. Uh, a bunch of Camaros and Corvettes are all getting together. So it sounds like there's going to be about 20 of us. And uh, it's a 300-mile like drive of twists and turns through through some hills in the bottom of Ohio. So it uh, sounds like it'd be a good drive. So maybe I need to get some Forza going here and get some practice, you know, find those yes. curvy roads. And uh, we'll see. They got twisty roads down there. Are you going to be going through some quarries? Um, through some no. rock and lime there's, and stone? There's a little bit of baby hills down the very bottom of Ohio. Kind of... Because, you know, we border like West Virginia and, and it runs kind of along the Ohio River. I guess it's supposed to be really scenic. Um, there's an area that it runs through. And I guess there's a a place called the Rim of the World as well. Uh, and it's like the highest point in Ohio. And they say you can see like the skyline of Columbus from there, which is you're actually on the bottom of Ohio and you're a couple hours away from Columbus. But you, they say you can see the skyline. It's high enough where... But, I'll grab some pictures, but it's like it might be a fun drive. You know, you get a little bit of hills in a sports car, and there's windy roads, and it looks like it has some straightaway. It's like a little two lane road. So, but uh, it's Ohio State Route 555, and they call it the Triple Nickel. So, mm, it'll be fun. Interesting. You're doing that at the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. If, if we can all kind of afford gas, they're, they're going to make a, a boatload of money off of gas. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. You for get, sure. You get 20 yeah, quarter better give me that out for. The fuel compensation. The the gas station that we all go to is gonna love us because we're all gonna be doing premium gas, you know. Like yeah, twenty yeah. cars filling up. They're gonna be they'll be excited. But 
That'll be good. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, th come on. Thank you guys. Thank you. Come, come more often. Yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> so come back again next week, guys. You can get some free donuts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's all we have for this week. Gentlemen. That's it. That's Ladies all. and gentlemen. Where, Gunny, where can we find you? Yeah, go find me in the loading screen over on Xbox and Twitch and you play uh, Gamertag Gunny Chief. I do play games over on that, that Sony platform. HTP underscore Gunny. That PlayStation 4 Pro. Bro. Playing some uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Where do we, where do we find you, Ryan? You can find me on Xbox Live, Steam, PSN as Gib eight seven 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 Ubisoft whatever I'm I'm on all of them same thing and mail and yeah you're gonna find me over in the Discord you know as the mail you can find me on Steam uh, still playing a lot of Apex and Origin so you can find me as the mail on there as well uh, I need to try maybe I'd like to get on there and do some more streaming I haven't done that in a while I did stream some Ready or Not about three or four weeks ago now I'm maybe I need to hop on there um, I'm I'm the mail O one on Twitch. Uh, hop over there if you want to follow. Maybe I'll try and get some more streaming here going on in, in the coming week. And so, but uh, besides that, what does Gidget say, Ryan? Peace out, Brussels sprouts. Catch you on the next episode of the Horrible Gamers Podcast. Bye-bye.